Welcome back to Legends of Avantress. Today we have a very special mini arc sponsored by Studio Agate. We will be playing their brand new game, Tainted Grail, Song of a Dying World. It is set in the Arthurian dark fantasy world of Avalon, where its people must resist a deadly fog and danger around every corner. Make sure you check out their link in the description to go check out their game on GameFound and pre-order your copy today. So, join us as we brave the weirdness and search for the Tainted Grail. A century has passed since humanity was broken by the fall of Avalon. The mists of the witness and their ores poured over our lands and swept us away. Once again, our civilization was wiped out. To survive, we hid in fear and fog. We, the heirs of Arthur, have waited for our time. And now it's finally coming. As the witness retreats, hope is reborn. New heroes rise and hold high the banner of our ancestors. The people of Avalon bravely step into the mists to reforge their kingdom. Together we face the colossal fall dwellers and the illusions of the weirdness. The reconquest of our island begins. It is night. A crescent moon hangs high in the sky over the farming village of Briarbrook. The settlement is very small, as are most in Avalon, consisting of only roughly 30 people. It is quiet around the smattering of simple cottages that make up the sanctuary. Inside one of the cottages, an old woman and her grandson prepare for bed. Grandma, will you tell me a bedtime story? Of course, my child. Do you want to hear one about the Whispering Wood? No, no, I want to hear about King Arthur and Merlin. Again? Yes, please. All right, my child. Long ago, on the continent across the sea, humanity lived in relative peace. That is, until the Red Death plagued our lands. The brave King Arthur and his wizard Merlin set sail to find new lands and escape this disaster. After many years at sea, King Arthur found this island of Avalon. But when they arrived, they found a horrific fog that laid over this land called the Weirdness. Living in the mists were all manner of mutated beasts and horrible giants called the Four Dwellers. They are at least 12 feet tall and move like death itself. I, I don't care for this part, Grandma. Can you skip ahead? Of course, my child. King Arthur and his brave knights found these Four Dwellers were no match for the legendary warrior king. Merlin the wizard was able to unlock the mysteries of the men here stones and use them to push back the terrible mists. Oh, that's like our statue right here in the village. That is correct, my child. The heroes secured this new land and carved out a place for humanity to thrive once again. Unfortunately, Years and years after King Arthur and Merlin passed away, the magics infused into the Menhir stones began to dissipate, and the weirdness rolled back in with a terrible vengeance. And, and that's why we don't wander in, away from the farm, right? Very good. Merlin's secrets and knowledge were slowly lost to time, so no one knows how to reignite the men here stones back to their protective state. The people speak of a grail, one lost to time, of course, that may one day bring back the legendary king, and he will once again vanquish the Four Dwellers, driving back the mists 
and saving humanity. Wow. I hope we find the grail. What happens next, Grandma? Next is bedtime, my child. I will see you in the morning. Without protest, the young boy lays down, closes his eyes, and tries to sleep. The old woman quietly gets up, walks across the room to a small table where there lays a small carving knife and some wooden discs. As she passes a window, she looks out upon the giant stone statue on the edge of the farming village. From here, it doesn't look so large. It is this village's men here stone, withered with age and much like herself, knowing it won't last much longer. She sits down at the small table and continues her work of carving runes and symbols into these small wooden tokens. Several cottages down the road, there is another fire lit in the hearth. Inside of this public house, quite literally a pub, three men sit, enjoying simple ale, simple stew, and playing cards. These men look like they might be a bit gruff, but they are generally seen together around town, around this settlement. It is not <laughs> uncommon to see the three of them together. Their names are Balto, son of Kassan, Christoph Reiner, and Jasper Dunnington. These are our players for this miniature arc. Players, what I would like you to do is one by one, whoever would like to go first, we're gonna introduce your character, we're gonna, you're gonna tell us your name, you're gonna tell us uh, a little bit about your appearance, we're gonna talk about what color you chose in building your character and your occupation, and we're gonna give an opportunity to explain to the audience uh, our character sheets a little bit. So whoever would like to begin, I feel like Richie should go first. <laughs> it's describing his character, knowing the system as well as he does, being our resident rules expert. <clears throat> so tell us your name. Uh, well, the name's Christoph Reiner. Uh, I'm a human as all folk are in this land. Stand about mm, maybe six foot three. Uh, slick back, black hair, with big mutton chops, and a mustache that comes down and around to attach. And I'm a soldier, or was a soldier. Uh, now I sit in this pub, playing cards with me mates. Uh, I, my color is red. And what does that mean? Uh, pulling back the veil into the mechanics of the game, um, my occupation is soldier and my color is red. And the color is your role in the party. Um, there's not a direct mechanical benefit, but it's a wonderful way that the system encourages a well-rounded party, so you don't have a bunch of edgy assassins, or you don't have a bunch of... Why'd you put it in me? Well... Uh, I'm just well, left and yeah. right. Well-rounded narratively. Yes. Yeah. yes well-rounded exactly. narratively, which so is actually an excellent It is the very tool. first step of creating your character. Yep. Uh, and why don't you tell us a little bit about what red means to your character. So what red means is that uh, red cherishes freedom. They're a little brash. They don't like being sort of tied down um, and sort of dealing with authority. Uh, you know, they are, they're a bit of a free bird in a way. And um, I would say they're probably a little more laid back. They're not super driven to achieve some great grand goal. Uh, they're kind of your, your classic smuggler archetype or um, a, by a barbarian or a Highlander or any, any character that sort of is, uh, appreciates freedom and independence. Uh, you say your occupation is soldier. That I is did. essentially your class. Uh, it is It helps determine what your uh, statistics look like, what kind of bonuses you get. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit of about what led your character to lay roots in Briarbrook and why you might have an interest in this little farming village? So, uh, well, the name is... Uh, again, it's Christoph Reiner, and uh, I'm from uh, not too far away from Camelot. And, uh, you know, small village like all villages are. I uh, joined the military young, and uh, I knew that I was good with a sword, and uh, I figured I could help protect my village of Carrick. And eventually I rose up and became the sergeant of the 8th Carrick Swordsman. Uh, and 
uh, the crown would send us to fight their wars and uh, the old sorcerer Mordred up in Crow's Nest, he, uh, he's some unnaturally alive, hundreds of years. And uh, while we were up there fighting, uh, we got word that one of, a commander of one of his rook knights was captured. And uh, the ape swordsmen were to escort him back to Camelot for trial. Uh, we got waylaid on our way back. And uh, to keep a long story short, uh, we were tricked by one of uh, the Raven King's necromancers. Uh, he summoned a great undead worm and wiped out uh, my entire regiment, except me. I was a lone survivor. I knew I couldn't go back. So I became a sellsword, mercenary of sorts, and uh, I worked my way down south, uh, earning coin to defend folks, kill monsters, uh, or kill people if the coin was right. And uh, eventually came down with a nasty illness and uh, found my way here to this village. And uh, <coughs> me mate Balto nursed me back to health. And I figured, you know what? I'm tired, I'm an old man. Uh, the ripe old age of 42. So I figured, why don't I stay a while? Well done. I think that's a perfect segue for Balto to go next. After we get through the next two characters, I'll talk a little bit more about the character sheet and things like that uh, before we move on to the next part. Please. Tell us your name, tell us a little bit about what you look like, your occupation, and what would have led your character to lay roots here in Briarbrook. My name is Balto. <clears throat> I'm very tall and broad-chested. I have a large beard that hangs down halfway or so. Uh, almost red, but mostly just light brown hair. And I uh, uh, do not come from Avalon. I am not from here. I am from across the sea, where I found uh, death. It was uh, where I was born. But of course, I tried my best to survive with my family, and I tried to survive the Red Death, but the plague, uh, it is always present. It is always there. Um, I am going to pause there before I describe the remainder of the reason why I brought myself to Briarbrook. Sure. Uh, and say that uh, I am a brown healer. Uh, brown being my color and healer being my occupation in the game. Uh, I uh, know um, much about the natural remedies. Uh, why is that important? Brown is uh, the seeking of knowledge sort of uh, flavor of class uh, or, or narrative role uh, that one would uh, play. Curiosity, um, learning uh, wisdom or facts or really anything, but really that it's the, that the thrust towards knowledge uh, that defines that and typically, it would benefit you in going in sort of a magical direction uh, if you wanted to start experimenting with some of the low magic uh, systems in the game. Uh, you might be able to um, do some of the equivalent of like level one cantrips and, or level zero cantrips and uh, level one spells and stuff like that in the game. Uh, that was not Balto's path. Um, instead, of course, he was drawn towards the natural world and so his nature of healer is very much literally uh, finding herbs and, and uh, uh, crushing other substances and creating, um, you know, using vinegar and milk and uh, these kinds of substances to produce medicinal recipes, uh, which is what he did on the shores of the continent beyond the islands of Babylon that we find ourselves on, and uh, once he arrived. Uh, eventually I have to leave. Uh, I have to go. I have to uh, uh, leave. I cannot stand the violence of the plague anymore. It made me do terrible things, and I want to see if I can find uh, peace. So I leave and I go to Avalon with great cost. But I am not welcome when I arrive. I try to trade my skills of 
medicine and and remedies, but I am made fun of for my strange ways and my accent until I find my way to Briar Brook, where they take me in. They are welcoming here. And this is where I stay and do my best to redeem myself for the pain I had to inflict to inf flee the Red Plague. Well done. Mikey, tell us a little bit about your character. Start with your name, the, the color you chose when you were building your character. Explain a little bit about what that means. Tell us your occupation, uh, what your character looks like, and what led you to ra lay roots here in this tiny farming village. My name is Lord Jasper Wa. I mean, not, uh, J my name is Lord Jasper Dunnington. I am a gray ruler by occupation, but you will see as I play cards, the a man of 42 years old, dirty bl blonde hair, shoulder length, but some pulled back into ponytail. Uh, at my side is a crossbow and a cane. My leg is, one of my legs is twisted. And I wear uh, a padded doublet over which I wear very simple armor of boiled leather. And above that, I wear a surprisingly nice uh, surcoat of purple with heraldry embroidered, a black hydra. Uh, I chose gray, which I can go into now. Yes. Gray is about the color of, uh, it's the color of perfection and self-improvement, believing that humans can strive to, um, to basically achieve incredible things, and really it's self-improvement, uh, very kind of individualistic and uh, greatness um, is possible. Uh, and that's really the a, a big tenet uh, with the perhaps, you know, the bordering on pride, at least for Jasper. Um, what else does it say about my occupation as ruler? Um, yeah, talk about what yes. a ruler is. Yes. Yeah, so uh, my occupation as a ruler is I am able to, uh, I am not much of a fighter, uh, as we'll talk about in my uh, backstory, but uh, I am very much able to uh, command leadership and inspire and command and uh, give orders to my friends to help them in battle uh, as I really kind of take a strategic view of the battlefield. So I uh, have a, uh, a lean towards tactician uh, more so than the fighter or the healer of the group. Should I talk about my backstory? Yes, yeah. please. Uh, as much as you'd like to divulge. Well, I figure that we all know each other, the audience may know, there's not much time to slowly drip out our backstories. <laughs> so, House Dunnington was a, from the southern kingdoms of Avalon, uh, far to the south by the Grubwood, uh, our ancestral castle and lands of Blackmont, uh, our sigil of the Black Hydra. Uh, we served, I served very uh, loyally my liege lord, House Mertonley, uh, the, my liege lord, Titus uh, Mertonley. When I was a young man, I wished to be a knight until I, uh, when I was a squire, I uh, lost a tilt in a joust and my horse fell on my leg, my left leg crushing it, uh, shattering my dreams of being a knight but I still was able to serve my liege lord by being a military advisor, tactician, strategist for House Mertonley. And I served as loyally as I could, but however, uh, Titus liked to be in the front lines of battle and he was smashed uh, and slain by a great enemy, uh, leaving his young son, not yet a man grown, as the lord of House Mertonley. Young Benedict, uh, shortly before his 16th name day, after giving the best counsel I could, uh, was a great young man, but he died mysteriously. Uh, some of the healers said it was a burst belly, some say it was a quick bout with the Red Death, but 
Many accused me of poisoning the young boy. After a petition to Camelot, I was stripped of my titles and my lands, and I was exiled from the south, uh, exiled from my castle. I lost everything, and I wandered, losing myself in drink and misery, until I was taken in by the good people of Briarbrook and found companionship in other broken men, such as my companions here. Well done, thank you. Uh, this is a perfect opportunity to talk a little bit more about the character sheet. In Tainted Grail, uh, the character uh, statistics are called ways. There are five of them. There is awareness, combativeness, conviction, creativity, and reason. Uh, when you're creating your character, you use more or less a standard array of one through five to assign each of those points to a certain way. Those are further broken down into domains, such as under awareness, things like perception and stealth, under combativeness, things like close combat and feats. And you can kind of think of those as the categories with which we'll be making skill checks. Uh, we call them resolution tests here. Um, and so each of our characters have, uh, each of our players have built characters uh, and chosen the way that most accurately represents what they wanted to play. We have our soldier, we have our healer, and we have our leader, uh, and uh, their ways are reflected in uh, the roles that they are looking to take. Um, outside of that, uh, we will be getting into other rules, how to make resolution rolls, and, and how to conduct combat when those things, if and when those things arise. Uh, the only other very important thing at this moment is explaining survival points, uh, because that I think is important to know now rather than later, especially considering the twists. Um, all of our characters here today, our players, have three survival points. Those are the only three survival points that they're going to get. They do not replenish on a long rest. Uh, they are extremely valuable. They allow you to do four different things. Uh, and I'm just going to tell you the titles of these things. I'm not going to dive into all the details right now. You, using a survival point, you can make a last-ditch effort if you are dying in combat to do some pretty amazing things. You can ignore pain in combat or to escape or uh, during uh, you know, some very high-intensity moments. You can ignore torment or rout. Uh, rout is basically morale, uh, things that can go awry while you're fighting. Uh, torment is a mental... Um, kind of anguish condition that can be brought on by uh, spending too much time in the weirdness or the fog. And lastly, uh, you can choose to make a reroll. Uh, very much like how we have done Twisted Fate in the, in the past. The difference is that you <laughs> must take the second roll regardless of it, if it is higher or lower. Um, so once you use your survival points, they are gone. Uh, except for our absolutely lovely uh, chat members who have been uh, giving us the, the, the subs and helping us with our sub drive, so I thank you. Let's pause there because we've gotten some more. I yes, we have some people to thank, please. Let's thank some folks. Let's thank some folks. Thank, thank you. you so much. Otaku Fangirl 101 for one sub, a uh, gifted sub, thank you so much. Traven Guard for five community Woo! subs, thank you so much. Vault Hunter Bun for five community gifted subs, thank you so much. And the Lover's Rose for another five that's a lot of survival points, Derek! That's so many. Thank you. Survival points. <laughs> awesome. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, no, no. Are survival points on my character sheet? Yes, they're right here. <clears throat> I see. I'm gonna write. I'm gonna put three <laughs> I'm gonna do three little bubbles. Three pips. Perfect. Three little bubbles in a pod. Bubble pips. Three little bubbles in a pod. Awesome. Thank you guys for uh, for explaining your characters a little bit um, and and helping me set the context of the character uh, creation process and the the um, the character sheets. <clears throat> we join our three players, these three gruff older men, sitting in this public house in Briarbrook, as they enjoy some simple ale, some simple stew, and play cards like they often can be found doing on any given night. The three of you know the dire situation that surrounds Briarbrook. It is no secret to the citizens and peoples of Avalon that the men here stones are no longer functioning like they once did. Certain settlements and towns might have magic practitioners, or perhaps a druid or an elder, 
who has some magic knowledge about creating runes or wristing that might help keep the weirdness and the fog at bay. But without the men here stones, it is only a matter of time before every settlement, town, and city is ultimately engulfed by the weirdness and humanity is doomed. Now, the three of you know that Briarbrook is just a small <coughs> farm, but these people opened their hearts to you. You've looked, o you've looked after them. You've looked over the town. You've protected their livestock from wolves. You've protected their, this small settlement from bandits. You come to Briarbrook with experience, knowledge, wisdom. And in the un most unlikely of situations or scenarios, you found a home here. You three have decided that you need to strike out from Briarbrook to attempt to either find a lead on lost knowledge that perhaps one of Merlin's descendants might have on how to reignite the power of this Menhir stone or maybe find a new location to move the residents of Briarbrook to. You're not sure. You know your best chance of a lead is in the great city of Camelot, which is the largest city in Avalon. But you have a pretty rough journey ahead. There are valleys, forests, mountains, all manner of terrain between you and Camelot. Most of you have never been before. Some of you have experience walking through the weirdness and the fog. It is not an experience that you prefer to think about on more than one occasion. It causes you distress, but you know what you must do on the eve of your grand journey while you sit in this pub and enjoy a pint with friends. Oh, Dunnington got me again. Uh, well played. You should learn to quit while you're ahead. Uh, well, uh, see if that knowledge sticks for the next hand. And I'll deal another hand. Thank you. I think that we should reconsider our departure time. The sooner that we begin our journey, the fewer prying eyes there will be, fewer questions asked. Jasper, we've been planning this out for at least a week, and now you fucking tell us? I need more time to prepare my uh, uh, remedies. They may not be as effective as uh, ones with herbs uh, more powerful, but I have more forging to do. You're right. You're right. It is the anxiety of the calm before the storm, the night before a battle. I mean, we'll hear you out. Why don't you, if you have a, you know, you're basically the smallest one of the group. Mm. If you have a suggestion, let's consider it. What do I know of our plans to leave? You know that the Avalon is a very tough place to exist, especially in a small community like this. There's a reason why on nights when you gather in the public house, you don't trade in coin. The owners of this public house allow you to drink and eat for free. It's because of all of the wonderful things that you've done for the people of this, this settlement. <clears throat> that being said, knowing that your journey is so difficult, the tiny farm settlement pulled together resources to hire a mistfarer mm. to lead you to Camelot because you don't know the way. And this mistfarer, who is someone who will have lots of experience traversing the mists and the fog, the weirdness, will help keep you safe on the way there. You know Camelot is your destination because it being so populous, it's your best shot at finding a lead to help you achieve one of the two goals or perhaps find another solution that you hadn't even thought of. You know that the Mistfarer will be arriving in Briarbrook sometime in the morning but ultimately, it will be up to you when you are ready to leave 
you, you know that you'll have the morning, maybe even late morning to prepare and do things that you need to do on your own. Uh, and that most likely there will be a small crowd of people who have grown very fond of you to see you off. Got it. I think if our Mist Farer, if he is not weary from his travels already, I, I am not concerned if I or any of us are recognized and we cause trouble. But if these are good people here at Briar Brook. I would rather us be very far away from the sanctuary before any trouble is aroused. I'd much rather not have any danger be brought back here. Well, I mean, you made the plans with the Mist Farer. I suppose when he shows up, we can leave right away. And that being said, you know, if if the folks in Camelot put together who I am, you know, I suppose I could be court-martialed and executed. I was never formally discharged from the military, but uh, the Eighth Carrig Swordsman, we were a small regiment, and uh, we're from a fucking bumfuck village. Uh, for as long as I served the crown and fought for him, I've never stepped foot in Camelot proper. So, I think the odds are good no one's gonna know who the fuck I am. Do you think that Camelot is as big as they say that it is? Oh, it's big. I've seen it from far off. I was a few uh, hundred miles north of Camelot, and you just go far enough south, you can see it. You can see the tops of the walls. Well, perhaps it will be easy to be lost in the city then. That's my hope. I'm not too concerned about it. Should be fine. Well, I've never been to Camelot, but my fate was sealed by it. A letter with a wax seal. No proper trial. Mm. If that is any indication of what they believe in justice, then perhaps we have more to fear than we initially suspected. But... I refuse to hide my arms, my family's crest. It's been far too long that it's been in my chest, buried beneath all my belongings. If they recognize me and they wish to send me back to be hanged or beheaded as a traitor, I care not. I have served my sentence in exile, but I do not wish to bring any of that back to these good people here. Agreed. This is uh, a good place. Instead of wax seals that condemn, they use wax to make candles that shed light and yes. they share it with others. Yes. Well, do you think you can use some of your connections, maybe? Or if you have any connections, once we're there. Yes, I, that is, I know of of certain officials, and I had made many such correspondences, although I never made the trip myself. It was long journeys on horseback were exceedingly painful for me, and so I usually sent vassals and go-betweens. But I have been branded a turncloak. If not for these good people, I would have had no home at all. But I may be able to find a contact. We may be able to expedite our business in Camelot. But I just pray that our Mistfarer is not needing a full day to recover before we leave. The longer we dawdle here, the more anxious I get. The more that perhaps one wrong word to the wrong person Rumors spread quickly. Oh, if he's anything like any of the other Miss Fairies I've met, he's grim and hardy. He'll be ready to leave the second he shows up. Love, one more round, please, and then cut us off. We got important business in the morning. And yes. this is a this is a very common thing. This is what you do most nights when there isn't you know major work to be done or after the sun sets and you know there's there's nothing left to be done you you congregate here and this is what you do 
Uh, you have the rest of the evening to do whatever you'd like before you return to your, uh, you know, personal lodging, wherever you might be staying, whomever you might be staying with. Um, you are free to do what you want and prepare uh, before bed for uh, the morning and the uh, the journey at hand. You speak for yourself, Christoph. Do not cut me off. You can cut them off. The uh, the the person who is is behind the bar. He nods and and understands, and he waves over to his wife and and signals the, another round to to get ready for for whomever wants it and doesn't want to be cut off. <laughs> Thank you. I uh, uh, thank you. We'll also make this my last. I uh, have some final preparations to do before uh, I go to sleep. A plant that only uh, can be harvested under the full moon. And it is important that I do this task before we go. Well, <sighs> take all the time you need. Uh, I'll try not to get too blackout drunk before a battle. And if we're uh, traveling and we get waylaid by the mists, we may be in for one. I'll be fine. And look at that, Rhino, you finally won a hand. Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I should read that as an omen, good or ill. <laughs> You know, I think it's going easy on me, Dunnington. Hey, don't think I can remember the last time I won the hand. Well done. You'll get the hang of this game soon. It's only been how many years? If you drew the same cards I drew, I, nah, I do not think any amount of strategy would account for uh, luck. With that, I, I down my ale very quickly. Oh, I think I'm going to bed. I'll stay up too late, lads. Well, we need you in fighting shape. We don't have the same problem, so... Be big and strong for tomorrow, will you, Mr. Reiner? You know it. Good night. See you in the morning. And I'll sort of stretch and get up, and uh, I'll go back to probably some boarding house or wherever I'd be. Sure. Um, where I just have a room in the back of someone else's house, and I would... Uh, uh, I would just settle down for bed and uh, maybe just sort of like get packed and ready to go okay. uh, before I go to sleep. Awesome. We won't have any ale on the road to numb the pain. Well, maybe we'll be able to find some fucking wine. Perhaps. God. I will have uh, not as good as a dozen drinks, but I will have a little something for you each morning and night to make sure we make an easy journey. You're a good man, Balto. I thank you. I will not deplete your reagents to the best of my ability. I make no promises. We will try to find alternative avenues should the need arise and should our fortunes be good, all mother willing in Camelot. They will find you in the morning. I can always find a skin of cheap sour, and that'll do the trick. I nod, and I will um, also say goodbye to the uh, husband and wife who manage this public house. Um, maybe briefly chatting back and forth, checking in on uh, uh, some ailment that I helped the husband with months and months and months ago. I'm sure it's fine now, but then I will exit into the dark streets of the uh, village and um, find my way back to collect my things for a night journey. Yeah, uh, you you have a brief conversation with the the couple that owns this public house, and and they tell you that the the recovery is coming well. They thank you again, and and you know encourage you to come back whenever. You have done so many great things for this this small farming village and they, they thank you profusely. I will linger for probably another hour. Okay. And I will, this will probably be something that um, that Balto and Kristoff are used to, where basically I need like at least an hour alone uh, at the end of the night. And I'll just drink very quietly, not causing any issue and I will eventually 
um, once I've not belligerently drunk, but once I am very clearly uh, unsteady, uh, I'll grab my cane and I'll stand up and I will uh, leave an extra coin um, on the table and just give the uh, the serving man a nod and then I'll make my way back to wherever probably another boarding house or a spare room of some, or yeah. maybe if there's a church, yeah. maybe wherever I would have been put up there by would, the- There would definitely be a small cottage that would be designated for worship of the All Mother. Yeah. Uh, maybe not a church like you would think that you've seen in the past, but definitely a small cottage building that is mm. designated for religious worship. Uh, it is obvious to the people of this this settlement that, that the three of you are friends, but it is also no secret that you are a man who enjoys his solitude from time to time. Um, and so it's, it is as much as people see you with uh, Balto and Kristoff, they equally see you as much alone, enjoying time, seeming to be in thought, maybe a little too in your cups, uh, but never causing trouble. And still, still the people of this town have grown uh, uh, to have a fondness for you and the things that you've done for them. Awesome, and so wherever I would have at least a bed yeah. to sleep in, yeah, or absolutely. just a space, uh, I will lay my head down. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll like look out to see where if there's like a if I'm I don't know if it, this is like if you would have gone back gathered your things and then been heading out but I basically would have like kind of kept an eye out for you I think, you go I, on think your, I probably would have been beyond the village yeah. perimeter because I would have very yeah. quickly grabbed my harvesting tools and started making my way to wherever uh Far out enough that I could find wilderness to get some uh, yes. some materials, but not so far as to risk anything with the mist. Of course, you you know that the the mist and its intensity can change on a dime. You know this is it's something that you have grown to understand uh, living in Avalon for as long as you have. That being said, what little power this farming village's men here stone has keeps the fog at bay for a several mile radius. Oh. There's there's enough of a reprieve from the weirdness where these people they have areas to plant their crops. Okay. Uh, there is a there is a river that runs along this uh, this this small town that is not doesn't seem polluted by the fog. It it, it seems to be untouched as as it flows. So you you have you have your spots that you like to go to do your foraging, to do your looking for your your different herbs and things like that. Um, are you looking to to do some sort of? Um, I, I'm endeavoring to find the last of uh, an ingredient that I was hoping to keep. It it, it it's a good ingredient for um, uh, a decoction. I have some, but I just used it up for the making of what uh, I have in my pouch. Absolutely. And so if I could. I would love to see if I could find the, the this one flower, um, which is it's really the easiest to spot when it blooms at this time of night, uh, night. Yeah, so this is something that you've done dozens if not hundreds of times. You know where to look, uh, but I'm going to need you to make our very first resolution roll oh, to determine yeah! uh, whether or not you are able to find them, even though you know where to look, because this flower is a uh, particularly uh, difficult, you know, it only blooms in a certain time or you can only see it. So what I'm going to need you to do is uh, make a reason roll. Uh, and the way that this is going to work, uh, we'll focus on natural environment. So my question to you is, are, do you have discipline in flora and fauna? I do not. Okay, that's okay. So what's going to happen is you're going to roll a 1d10. You are going to add your way, which is reason, however many points you have in reason. And you're also going to add the domain of natural environment. That will give me 2 plus uh, two, 5 for reason, 2 for natural environment. So I'm adding 7 to... Uh, I didn't... Uh, it flipped out. But roll again, I'm, roll no, again. No, 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 If it's cocked, roll again. Well, it's not cocked, it just went in a weird way. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go with a four, because that, that, that landed, it was the intended roll. Four plus uh, seven is 11. Mm. Okay, perfect. Uh, you, again, have done this dozens if not hundreds of times. You go to where you know this flower to bloom, and 
before you are even immediately on top of it, you recognize the familiar, almost bioluminescence that it has underneath of the moonlight. And you are easily able to collect, maybe not as much as you would have hoped, but enough to maybe get you by for a few days and the start of your journey to Camelot. I'll snip off the pieces that I can, uh, keeping the plant alive for future harvests, um, hoping that that's uh, uh, going to be something that, I, I've endeavored to share this knowledge with the folks of the village and uh, told them where this is, and so I hope that they find it too as I collect the, the, the plants and then looking around for any wild animals to make sure I turn and begin to the, the 30, 40 minute walk back to town. Awesome. Uh, to provide a little context to our uh, viewers, um, because this is a 1D10 system, obviously the math works a little bit differently than a D20 system. And we have a difficulty threshold chart that I'm gonna read out loud just so you get an idea of what we're looking for. Uh, easy would be a difficulty threshold of eight. Standard is 11. Complicated is 14. Difficult is 17. Very difficult is 20. Exceptional is 25, heroic is 30, and superhuman is 35. So you have to think, <laughs> if you only can add 10 from your roll, you're getting 25 somewhere else to make a superhuman roll. Yeah. Andy, is, uh, Andy created a cheat sheet for us for all the rules, and it has a matrix of all those difficulty thresholds, but you didn't even include No, I left off heroic and superhuman. Fuck you, yeah. guys. <laughs> this, is, no this is like level one, level two adventure. We're starting off pretty low here, so there's absolutely yeah. no chance of anybody rolling heroic or superhuman. I walk superhuman. into a cobweb, and I turn into cubes of meat. Like <laughs> <laughs> You walk directly into Lethica, yeah. and you turn into cubes of meat. Um, That's very funny. Okay, uh, so you all find your way back to your uh, where you are sleeping for the evening. You've done whatever rituals you normally do before you go to sleep, and uh, you have uh, no issue falling asleep other than perhaps potential jitters for maybe going on an adventure for the first time in who knows how long for all of you. Your lives have been relatively simple outside of the stray wolf or the bandit who picked the wrong farm to attempt to loot. It is morning. The three of you awake, having slept fairly well. Some of you may be better than others. The morning has arrived in which you know what you must do. You have the morning to prepare to do what you want to do. Maybe you have your own morning rituals that you normally do. It would not be uncommon for you to maybe swing by the public house for a, a spot of breakfast. Uh, and you have time to do that this morning if you'd like, whether you meet your companions there or you go it alone. But you know that even this early in the morning, uh, as you begin to prepare for the day, you notice that some of these farmers and settlers are already gathering on the edge of town awaiting the three of you to start your adventure. They don't seem in a rush. There's just a little bit of a buzz. There's an energy that floats around this farm that is, that is unusual. There's a hopefulness that you might all not always feel. I would have only gotten a handful of hours of sleep. I probably don't ever get much sleep. Uh, especially with uh, the booze fucking up my circadian rhythm. <laughs> sure. Uh, I would have gotten up very early, and I think that before, you know, as soon as there's any kind of light at all, I'd probably um, basically go towards, if there's like a clearing and there'd be a tree, where I would have like maybe had some kind of target, and I would just be kind of loosing corals and basically practicing how fast I can reload and my cane kind of goes up further, although there's a handle down here, there's also a spot for my elbow where I can basically rest it and then reload and practicing my <laughs> reloading and my aiming in order to basically uh, make sure that I'm ready for the potential dangers to come. Yeah, as, as you do this, you it is clear that you are no stranger to this weapon, to this crossbow. It is something that might feel a little unnatural at first, You've defended the town, but those instances are so rare that you feel, as you stand in front of this tree and loose bolts into it, 
almost a, a sense of fluidity coming back to you, uh, a remembrance of, of days of yore when you were younger. Uh, maybe shortly after your accident when you had to take up this weapon instead of your preferred. But as you sit here staring, focused on this tree, uh, loosing one bolt into the other, it is an impressive display if anyone were to watch you do this. I would be in my, um, you know, in, in, in the back room of whatever house I'm in. Uh, I would have gotten up a little early, um, still well rested, and start sharpening my sword. And, um, you know, maybe putting a little bit of uh, oil on it to, to maintain it. Um, and once that's done, I would sheath it and throw my shield on my back and uh, go out into the morning air. Awesome. Yeah, you do. It's it's a it is a actually pleasant morning. Uh, it it almost seems as if the All Mother herself is smiling down upon you and granting you some sort of good fortune uh, for the times ahead for your future journey. I will um, be up around the same time, and knowing that this particular villager that I want to visit probably won't be able to. Uh, leave the house to join us in the farewell gathering. Uh, I will go and see the um, sick child that I've been looking after for uh, a few months. Um, there's been uh, some turns and some uh, uh, hard nights, but uh, this will be the last time that I get to make the tea that I making I have been making them a remedy. And things seem to be getting better. I've taught his parents uh, this uh, information and uh, endeavor to show them what herbs to use in what order at what levels of maturity. Um, but uh, I would go there to make sure that he's all right and uh, make the tea, make sure that it's drank in full. And then um, once uh, uh, I see that it's sort of, the flush returns to his cheeks, um, only then would I finally get my remaining items and uh, find myself to the borders of town. You, yeah, this is a, a ritual that you've done regularly now for as long as you've needed to since this poor young boy has fallen ill. Uh, you've passed your knowledge on to his caretakers, his parents, to make sure that they can continue to administer treatment while you're gone. You may have even prepared uh, batches of tinctures uh, ahead of time to, to help them out, to add to the tea, in addition to showing them how to brew it. And, and you're hoping, uh, by your calculation, that this young man uh, shouldn't be ill for too many more days or weeks longer. And you are confident that uh, you have left them, you have equipped them with the knowledge that they need to make sure that this boy is okay. You all take your time doing these things in the morning as you, as you head towards the edge of town where this small uh, group of settlers await you. As you walk up to them, uh, there are greetings, smiles, pats on the back, hands offered uh, to be shaken. Uh, you accept them. These are people that care about you. They've seen the things that you do for them, and they know beneath the gruffness that you are good people. And they are happy that you are bringing them a chance to continue to potentially live here in Briarbrook or find a new settlement, a new place to grow crops uh, and bring salvation to these people. Um, they are, there's a hint of sadness as they know that you must leave though. Uh, a conflicted feeling, uh, this hope and this sadness, uh, but they know what must be done. As you look out farther from the town, you see a small figure walking towards the village. It's hard to entirely see what they're wearing, but it's clear that they have travel clothes, some light makeshift armor, a hood, and you know that that is most likely your Mistfarer waiting. He doesn't seem to be in a rush. He knows what needs to be done. And he's waiting for you to say your goodbyes. As these people all wish you well and tell you each how sad they are that you have to part. One by one, they, they wish you well and they, they go back to their homes to their daily duty to prepare for the day because 
even though you are leaving, life here in Briarbrook must go on. One by one, the crowd begins to thin, and they all part except for one, a small, ancient old woman that you know by the name of Sasha. She walks up to you, broad smile on her face, and she says, My boys, I am so proud of you. You have done such great things for Briarbrook, and I cannot wait to see the success of your journey. Sasha, it is uh, an honor. We, uh, we have perhaps done deeds here in town, but it is uh, small in comparison to what Briarbrook has done for us, for me. You, uh, if we get uh, to Camelot and return with some solution, then maybe we have done great. Yeah. Don't give us credit until we've actually solved the problem. But we, if the All-Mother wills it, we will return with good tidings. We don't need credit. And frankly, I mean, since I sort of settled here just doing things that aren't for gold or because I need to, it's been nice because I want to be here. So again, like old Duddington said, we don't need credit, but I will take that muffin. Oh, thank you. She smiles warmly and she looks at you and she says, Oh, Christoph, my strong boy, here. And after you've taken the muffin, she goes into her pack and she pulls out a small bindle. I did bake some extra goods for you on your trip. Oh, I knew you would. <laughs> I do not want you to be hungry, but you must share with your friends. Oh, uh, well, all right. She hands you the bindle and as you take it, she puts one hand over your hand and says, Inside the bindle, there is a little extra something for you. I can't wait to see what it is. Thanks, Graham. I'll see you soon. She looks to Balto and says, Balto, my little medicine man, here is a small pouch of herbs that you might not be able to find on your journey. Here, here, take. And she pulls out what looks like an almost ancient leather pouch. You're not sure how long or when this could have possibly been made. Uh, it's it's a little stiff and, and dusty, uh, but she hands it to you and she smiles warmly as you take it. Sasha, you remember how long you need to boil the water before you take your evening uh, remedy? Of Yes, yes, Balto, of course. Of course I know. Every I, night. Yes, I, I will never, I will never miss. Okay. I will never forget. Thank you, Sasha. Thank you. And Jasper, my proud Jasper. Here, I made this for you. And she reaches out and hands you a small wooden token with a charm collar carved into it. You must let go of your past burdens. Whatever troubles you, I know deep down you are a good man. Please give yourself a break. I will certainly endeavor to. Thank you very much, Sasha. Also, I have left all of the coin uh, beyond what we absolutely needed uh, for the journey. Uh, in my room. So you will find it if there's a traveling merchant in our absence that is able to provide with any services or goods that you are lacking while you are gone. Spend it. It is yours now. Oh, oh my goodness. All mother be praised. That's very generous. That will that will offset the costs of the Mistfarer. Here! And she pulls out another small leather pouch, which is the funds that they collected, which you will need to give to the Mistfair to pay his fees. Please, please take this. It, it is not much, but it will pay the Mistfair. And and with the, the, the amount of coin that you've left behind, we, I don't know what to say. Thank you. Say nothing and thank the All Mother, not us. 
Of course, of course. Well, my boys, if I do not see you again, I believe it will not be because you did not succeed. I've opened what Sasha gave me. Yes. Sasha, this is... How did you get this? Do not ask. I have had them in my collection for a very long time. You are not the only medicinal knowledge person around here. That is good. And I will put it to good use, thank you. Good, good. Well, good luck. I believe you have someone waiting for you. You're right, we should get going. Thank you for everything and uh, hopefully I'll look back to the Meneer Stone uh, and I don't know if I if we can like physically see it like not as strong as it used to be. There isn't but, a there isn't a physical indicator of the magics. Right. What you see is that it's weathered, it's worn. What you do know, though, having spent a lot of time around it, is that when you're close to it, you can feel something. Right. So from out here, where where you are, you wouldn't be able to feel it, but you would know the familiar feeling of having been up close to it before. Uh, then I'll just sort of think about, you know, or just kind of feel that understanding of like, hey, this thing is waning. Yeah. And that if we don't succeed, uh, the mist might swallow this place. Uh, don't you worry, none. We'll be back in no time, and uh, we'll do what we can to fix it right up. I know you will. I know you will. Thank you. And good luck. All right, mates. Are you ready? Yes. Let us meet our guide. I hope guiding us hopefully to victory and not certain doom. I'm not sure which is more likely. You begin to walk towards that figure that is out uh, north of your small farming village. It's a short walk, uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes. He's, he's a ways off. He, he certainly didn't want to come into a town and raise suspicion or, or cause any sort of a, a ruckus. Um, but as you make your way to this uh, individual, you uh, might begin to inspect uh, the, the token that, that Jasper that you've been given. Yes, the, I will inspect the, it. The herbal pouch, Balto, that you've been given. Uh, and perhaps maybe even Kristoff couldn't help but dig into the bindle a little early. Not lady. What? <laughs> can, can I have my fortune? What you find yeah. is... No, I don't. I don't need starting it. Starting with the bindle, uh, it will give you an additional three rations of food. Oh you, shit! That you can oh. each take one more ration of food okay. uh, and add to your. I will enjoyment. pass those out. I will pass those out. And inside the bindle, Kristoff, you find a wooden token on a rope necklace, very similar to the one that Jasper was given. Uh, the room that is carved into it is different, but as you study it and you look at it, you have this understanding uh, that it is. It gives you a sense of calm, mentally. It, it kind of puts you at ease. Huh. And mechanically, what this will do is it, it will grant you a one-time use plus one to a mental resistance roll. She, uh, she knows me well. Sick. Jasper, wow. your token, uh, again, similar, simple wooden disc. Uh, carved with, uh, lovingly hand carved on, on a leather piece of strap that you can wear around your neck, uh, has a different symbol than the one that Kristoff has. Uh, it will grant you a one time use of blocking a single point of physical damage taken. Cool. And Balta, not only is this collection of herbs rare, unique, things that you know, these, these, these herbs are not things that you've never seen, but you know that they don't grow around Briarbrook. You know that they potentially don't grow in the fog or the mist. This may allow you to create some tinctures or de decoctions or elixirs that you otherwise might not have. And it will also give you a one-time use plus one roll to a decoction roll. Nice. Plus one oh. bonus. You chat amongst yourselves in the short five minute walk as you dole out these rations, these wonderful baked goods from Sasha and and uh, think about and hope that this is not the last time that you see these people. I will miss these muffins. 
Yes. Yeah, me too. Oh. And it is not long before you are in the presence of this gentleman who you believe to be the Mistfarer. Now that you are closer, you can see that he is uh, a little under six foot in height. He is not a broad gentleman. He's not a broad man. He's, he's lithe. He's thin. He wears simple leathers, uh, m almost more cloth than leather. Uh, it's, it's very clear that the things that he chooses to wear are to make him quick, to make him stealthy, to make him not draw attention to himself. These are dark colors. He wears a hood uh, and has a cowl pulled up over his mouth. You, you really can only see his eyes uh, as, as you approach, and he says, uh, All right, listen up. Name's Leo. I'm your misfair. You got, you got the fees? Leo, my good man, yes. I have it right here for you. All right. You'll find every coin accounted for. He uh, kind of weighs it in his hand and holds it without counting it. He's, he nods. He sticks it in his back pocket. Leo, I got that correct? Leo, Leo, yes. Yeah, you you uh, notice one of the first things that he, uh, uh, hearing him speak, that he's not easy to understand. Uh, mm. it, it's, it's almost as if there's a... It's not a dialect, but it is, and it's not that he has trouble speaking, but he is, his, his voice is a little garbled. It's, it's hard for him to, 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 it's hard for you to understand what he's saying uh, a little bit. My name is Jasper Dunnington. Uh, this is our blade. Uh, this is uh, Christoph Reiner. And our healer here is Balto, son of Kassan. We are not leaving Briar, Briar, Briarbrook, do you understand? If we are captured and undergo extreme torture, you are not to divulge that. You can divulge anything else about your life, I frankly don't care. But we are not to harm the people of Briarbrook. Right, right. Uh, no, no worries about that. Uh, I've done this more times than you can count. Uh, you have bought my secrecy, my silence. Well, boy, uh, aren't you a little short for a Miss Vera? I'm just kidding. Oh, how's the weather looking? Miss feeling at bay? He he doesn't seem to get your joke. He he's a little he's a little solemn. He kind of stares at you and says, "Well, weather should be fine. Uh, but beware, the fog, the mist, can change at a moment's notice with the wind." Well, uh, I'll be on guard, and uh, I'm excited to be back on the road for once, frankly. When I came to this island, I traveled from the south to our current location. An uneventful journey. I have no experience with the mists. What do we do if we see the fog emerge or the wind shift? Well, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. The mist will, we will see the mist. We'll be traveling through it. What? My job is to avoid it. That's what, what, precisely what I was going to say. That's why we are paying our good friend here. So we don't have to worry about that. That is his job. That's right. There we go. Good few, man. A few sets of rules before we get started. First yes. off, stick a good 15, 20 feet behind me. It's for me to be able to spot things before they jump out and get us. We can do that. I assure you, you will not need to persuade me to stand in the back. That is what I'm very good at. You all look like experienced men, but there's a difference between simple brigands and wolves and the mutated horrors that await us. Well, uh, let's pray to the old mother that we avoid the mutated horrors. And I'll take a Bandit a brigand any day. Our what? quest is good and blessed by the All Mother. I have faith that we will arrive at our destination unmolested. With a little bit of luck, we'll be able to uh, stick to the light mist. But you never know. Number two. Take a look at this. And uh, out of his pack, you see that he has a, a, a well-equipped sack with him. 
uh, sort of a, 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 a backpack uh, of sorts. Uh, he pulls out a piece of parchment and unrolls it, and it's a map. And uh, are any of you familiar with the discipline of cartography? I am not. Nope. Okay. <laughs> you you see this map. Uh, you are not able to immediately decipher it other than it... What the fuck is this? Other than it being a map of Avalon. If that, that so much is obvious. Yeah. But there's these strange lines and markings and all sorts of... Almost like a secret language that he seems to use himself. That he has m drawn all over this, this map uh, that he's showing before you. And he says, There are two major... Landmarks that we are looking for. All right. The first, right. which is a couple of days out, is a large gnarled tree. You can't miss it. Biggest tree you'll ever see. I call it the Sky Sundra. It's the first way of us knowing we're on the right track. Landmark number two a large broken mania stone. Smashed to bits. Hmm few more days out after that. Couple more days. She'll be the edge of the forest. And Camelot will be in view. Mm. I'm telling you this in case we get separated. Understood? Loud and clear, Miss Farah. Is what shattered the many a stone lurking in the forest that we are about to proceed through. Hard to say. Things been smashed as long as I can remember. Could be from hundreds of years ago. You'll find it, uh, the one in Briarbrook's not the only one losing his power. It's part of the course these days. Aye. For most of our journey, we're going to be walking near a stream. So you know your own course. Keep to the stream. To the best of your ability, yes. It sounds very easy. Not even the three of us could fuck that up. Any other questions? Stream, tree, statue, forest line. Camelot. And then Camelot. That's right. But don't give us all your secrets. I hear that you can smell the city before you see it. I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> I have heard this as well. I always thought it meant to be a good thing. Is that not? No, it's from all the reeking shit, Walter. What? Oh, the, no. how you think it smells fragrant of flowers brought down by the king? Oh, it's not just the shit; it's the piss too. I had idea That's of worse. some perfume or flower. I have much to learn. Welcome to Avalon. I know you've been here a better part of a decade, and you still have much to learn, as do we all. Lead the way, my good man. And he does. Uh, you know that he tells you uh, that it's several miles before you really reach the edge of the forest uh, with which the real adventure and danger potentially starts. You have conversations as you're walking. Uh, this is not a difficult walk. This is flat land fields, uh, maybe minor hills as you are, are moving along. You strike up conversation about um, different things. Uh, he asks you about your supplies. He wants to make sure that you're well stocked. You, you can offer up how many rations you have to him. He lets you know that uh, you're probably going to have to, we're all probably going to have to hunt at some point. Uh, you know that even though there are uh, mutational horrors that lurk in these woods, even if you might not have seen them yourself, you also know that there are plenty of normal game that also lives in the uh, forests and in the fog beyond all understanding uh, of why that should be the case. You also know, uh, he tells you, that the journey to Camelot is going to be a long one. Not necessarily so much because of the distance, but because traveling through the weirdness is difficult. It's slow going. You oftentimes may have to wait out fog as it rolls in. You might have to find other ways around it. Uh, it's not often wise to stay in one spot for too long, but it's even more foolish to rush your way through the underbrush. 
he starts to tell you about the effect that the weirdness has on humans and beasts alike. His descriptions are not pretty. He talks about how humans who spend too long in the fog, in the mist, who don't have the proper protections, begin to change, lose their humanity. As he tells you and regales you with stories of other uh, instances of him guiding people through the fog, it is then when you begin to reach the edge of the wood. It's a sunny day. It's about noon, it's midday. But you can even tell just standing on the edge of this forest that it is darker within the wood. The canopy is thick. There's a strange smell in the air. It's almost sweet. You're not sure. Leo looks over his shoulder as you're a little ways slightly behind him, and he says, All right now, is everyone ready? Yes. What if something creeps up behind us? How are you going to account for that? Are we supposed to alert you? Oh, well, on the off chance something happens to sneak up on us, which is unlikely because you've got Leo, we'll deal with it. Let me know. But hardly unlikely. I'm the best that ever was. Have you ever heard the saying that announcing your plans is a good way to hear the old mother laugh? <laughs> oh, that sounds like a good one. All right. For yes. The rate, for the rate we're paying him, if uh, something sneaks up behind us, we should ask for a refund. Keep that in mind, my good man. I'll keep an eye behind us. I'm sure it's going to be fine. It's just a little jump through the woods. You proceed. Immediately, as you begin to cross the threshold into this wood, there's almost a chill in the air. You feel it's, 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 it gets considerably cooler. The sun isn't able to reach your skin. There is a light haze that some of you have experienced before, and you know this to be the weirdness. You can feel it. It's thick. <sighs> Again, you can kind of smell it. it. You almost feel like it sticks to your skin, but there's nothing there. You try to like wipe it away. You can taste it in the back of your mouth, but you proceed. The woods are dark, gray, and travel is slow. Leo is taking you on an often not traveled path. You're stepping over large fallen trees. You're taking your time to have to duck under other uh, massive masses of brambles. But you're surprised at how well you're moving. There isn't a lot of talking going on while this happening, certainly not from Leo. He's told you that you're able to talk amongst yourselves as long as you do it in a hushed tone and you don't really draw attention to yourselves. It isn't long before you see him make a familiar hand gesture with which he told you before. His hand shoots up in a fist. No. Nope. You all immediately stop. <sighs> he gets down and he hunches real low, almost trying to conceal himself in the brush. You wait, you hold your breath, and he points and he, tell, and he, he gives you another hand signal that says, we're gonna go around to the right. And he ushers you to follow, but he presses his finger to his, where his lips would be under his cowl, as if to say, not to make a noise. As you proceed forward, I'm gonna need you all to make a resolution test. Fuck. Of stealth, oh. okay. which is going to be your awareness way and the domain of stealth. So if any of you are, have any particular disciplines that fall under the stealth domain, uh, oh. now will be the time to let me know. Any, any I do can not. apply? I don't, but I could technically point at one and be like, oh, any of them? In this instance, yes, I would be interested oh, to hear. because you're saying stealth. And I would be interested to hear if any of you have a okay. discipline in stealth. All right. Oh, well, I don't have that. No, <laughs> I didn't think so, but I wanted to check. All right. Um, <laughs> you and I are doing great. I, 
Uh, ten. Okay. So again, the way that this works is you will roll a one d ten. You will add your way, and you will add the domain. So in this case, you will add your awareness, and then you will add your stealth. Um, so uh, and again, don't forget you guys have twists that you can use uh, up to three per roll if you'd like. Uh, what did everybody get? May I use three twists? <laughs> I got a four. Oh. I also would like to use three twists okay. because I also got a four. I'm gonna use one to get myself to eleven. Okay. Oh, we know that we all we can't even with three twists still fail. Seven, right? Well, no, 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 no. no. You, don't, you do different. not know that. It, we don't know. You how know that the difficulty made. threshold for yeah. an easy check is eight, but you do not know what the difficulty threshold is. I see. So I think we should still use it. Because I, I failed, yep. Yep. Uh, and what I'll say is that like I have definitely been able to keep up with the general walking pace with my cane, but going into the forest, it's awkward. I'm probably getting snagged on roots, and I'm pushing through the pain, and I'm definitely at this point like very much feeling the throb in my in my upper in my upper thigh. Sure, I would agree with that. You you're not moving quickly, but this is not easy, right? I mean, you're not young men anymore. You're, you're middle-aged men, and people in Avalon right. often don't live very long anyway. Yeah. Uh, so it's not the speed of the journey that is difficult for you, Jasper, but it is your old wound your, that, is, that is potentially flaring up and causing you trouble. Uh, so that is a 7, a 7, and 11? Yep. You heed the warning of Leo, and... As you begin to creep through the woods, he is, through this underbrush, he's, he's pointing out loose branches. He's pointing out potential things that you might step on, a twig to snap to make noise. You don't know why he stopped, but with Leo's guidance, you find that even with these rolls, you're not making noise. The things that he is pointing out, the, the, the obstacles that potentially are in your way are obvious with Leo. You you get the sense that having Leo on your side makes things a lot easier. And you are grateful in this moment to have him because all mother knows what Leo saw. Because <laughs> you all certainly did not. Oh, fuck. Another couple of hours pass. And there's a moment where he, again, he puts up the signal to stop. But this time, he just, he calls you over closer. He brings you all in and says, Well, well, good job. I wasn't sure you all had it in you. Don't patronize us. <laughs> you did it. We avoided some nasty business back there. I told you, I'm the best that there is. I didn't see anything. Are you... Are you fucking with us? That was going to be my question. You're just trying to make yourself look useful. We'll believe you. Well done, Leo. Great job. I'll hit him on the back. Two words. Weirdness wolves. And we avoided them, right? That's what I do. Okay, well... Well done, Leo. We will take your word for it, Leo. Now let us not waste any more time so we can get out of these woods as soon as possible. All right. We've got a few more hours walk before we make camp for the night. Fuck. I know. It hasn't seemed like we made it very far, but we're doing well. We've made great progress. Again, it's not the distance. It's about the time. And we're making great time. Let's proceed. And you do. You continue to walk, like he said, for another three hours. Uh, you hear noises in the brush. The, the, the cawing of crows, ravens, maybe? But they don't quite sound like any crows or ravens that you might be familiar with. Something is off about them. It's not uncommon for you to hear a grunting or a howling or gnarl snarling uh, you know, far away. It's not close. Leo makes sure of that. And it isn't long before he stops you again and says, All right, this is where we're stopping for the night. We're able to have a small fire. We need it for the warmth. Shouldn't, should keep the beasties away. They don't like the, right, the light. And uh, let's set up a watch. Who's feeling dinner? 
Oh, I am feeling in there. Very much. You, uh, hear those crows? Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. It's not just me, right? No, oh, that you... It's not uncommon here in the wood. Uh, but I'll bet you they're not like any crows you've ever seen. Just like regular mutated crows? Oh, the weirdness has gotten to them. Their beaks are jagged and large, and the crows grow up to three times what you'd expect. Three, three times? Oh, and they feed on the carrion that falls on the forest floor. I, uh, I should have told you before we began our journey that uh, animals, uh, beasts especially, do not take kindly to m my presence. Is that right? They tend to uh, get enraged. It's oh. not something I can explain. Oh, that might have been something worth mentioning before we left they on this journey. They can something on him that we can't, apparently. All right, well, thanks for letting me know. I've been trying to pry it out of him for as long as I've known him with no no success, so I wouldn't begin to try now. So milk a, milk a cow once. <laughs> you should have seen how to Bessie reacted. <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> I had a bruise for many weeks. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, and then he realized it was a male cow. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, but that's not a mistake you make twice. <laughs> Do you have any wine? Well, no. But frankly, it wears down. There's no point. It's not meant for survival. Got to stay shot. And, and while we're having fine. this conversation, he's helping to set up camp. He's, you know, again, we, we're getting a small fire going, uh, preparing maybe, you know, for you to be able to prepare your rations and, and have a little bit of a hot meal. Um, yeah, no wine, no wine, no alcohol. Not on me right now. That's for when we uh, get to Camelot. <laughs> and I'm going to spend me obols. Um, I... Me too. Uh, what are we doing for water in this situation? Are we near the stream? Uh, do we have our uh, like some sort of a you water all stream? have your own personal sources of water, mm -hmm. and Leo has urged that you use those first sparingly before we have to all go through the process of attempting to find water here in the woods that might be clean or unpurified or untainted by the weirdness. Um, you have plenty of water. You you were prepared for a long journey. And you don't think that you'll run out before this journey is done. You've, you've brought plenty of water, provided that you consume it uh, conservatively. I will um, pour myself some water, and tonight we just enjoy water, Jasper. I'm sorry. Oh, he'll live. Lucky us. Look at him. He'll grimace and grit his teeth and make some sassy comment, but he'll be okay, won't you, Jasper? And reaching, Don't patronize me, Reiner. Reaching down, I'll pull out a small stopper, and uh, over the water that you have in your cup, I'll drop a few drips into it and then quickly seal it away and put it back into my satchel. I uh, turn water into wine for you, Jasper. A true friend. Unlike some of us. While you are uh, sitting down to enjoy your water and your rations, uh, it is at this moment that uh, Leo also sits down with you and is, is enjoying food, uh, that for the first time he pulls down the cowl that has been covering the lower half of his face. And it's now that you see that the left side of his face and his jaw is muting. <gasps> It is disfigured. This is clearly the effects of the weirdness on one of your fellow humans. And he's BB and C. Do I, would I know that, it, or I guess is it contagious or would, how would Kristoff feel about that? Um, if you've never seen uh, weirdness mutation on another human, it would be startling. It would be, you would be taken aback, potentially. You would know, though, that these mutations do not spread like the Red Death. Okay. Meat. It Got is it. not a disease. It is a magical mutation that happens from spending too much time in the weird without the proper protection uh, or precautions. 
And he he he, can, he begins to eat uh, as if nothing is wrong. Ooh, sorry about the face. Oh, oh, what me? Oh, yeah, occupational hazard as they call it. <laughs> I'm all right though. Don't hurt no more. Have my proper protection. Uh, these things happen. You don't travel through the weirdness for decades without having an accident once or twice. That's how you get to be the best. You live and you learn, right? <laughs> eh, how'd it happen if you don't mind me asking? Well, young Miss Fair, not uh, taking the proper precaution, proper charms, proper spells, and uh, spent a little too long once on a journey. And uh, this was the result. Lucky it only took a quarter of my face. <laughs> yeah. Too bad it wasn't a, I don't know, middle of your left thigh. Why you say that? Oh, I just mean somewhere, uh, somewhere less visible, I guess. But no, you know what? It just adds character. So, uh, you know, why even wear the cow in the first place? Well. The cow helps keep me concealed, but also doesn't startle people when I'm in uh, more popular areas. Yeah, if I were you, I'd wear a cowl too, so thank you for sparing us. Oh, oh right, no offense taken. <laughs> you say this injury hurt. It hurts no more because it has faded or because you found some kind of treatment? Oh, oh it hurt. Oh, it hurt when it happened. But uh, yeah, with proper treatment and uh, protections, it's uh, not so bad anymore. Hmm. I would learn more about these pr treatments. All right, right. Uh, it's magic beyond me, secrets, knowledge, but uh, there are wizards, there are medicine people who are familiar with the weirdness. Healing magic. Right, right, exactly. Um, would, would you have a name for, like, basically water mixed with whatever tincture that you added? Um, I, in my mind, I'm picturing that I have some sort of uh, a, a numbing reagent that uh, is like a diet laudanum. Right, and so so I I'm asking <laughs> because there's moon tea, or uh, you know, there's moon tea in a song of ice and fire, Ooh. and uh, it would there's... not be even remotely unreasonable for you to be able to craft some sort of tincture that would help uh, mentally ease your friend Jasper. This is something that you would have done in yeah. the past. Uh, maybe when the alcohol isn't helping, isn't enough, you right. might make something for him, uh, you know, without anybody else knowing to help him uh, uh, soothe his mind. I like moon tea. If you want to go with that, well, something legally to say. I will. I will <laughs> just. I will drink it, and I will kind of mutter to myself, it's like, "Well, next best thing to wine." And I will. Um, I'll basically um, kind of drop my cane, and I will just try to do the best that I can. As I'm very clearly in pain, as I'm just going to basically kind of. Um, uh, Maybe if I have to go out and undress and basically kind of just uh, make sure the best that I can that I'm able to mend my to to, to soothe my leg. Sure, Bolto, is this uh, tincture something that you brought with you, or is it something that you need to make with the ingredients that you brought? Uh, it's. I would say I have my healer's pouch. Whether or not I would have to actually. Um, no, I, I would say that this is something that I would have distilled long over time. Okay. But I have limited amount of. Yes. Right. This isn't something that like I can. Uh, take a few of the dried herbs and, and uh, roots and uh, barks that I have in my pouch and put it into water and bring it to a boil and actually like create a tea or or something along those or have to powderize it. I, I don't. That's not what 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 I'm what I've done here. This is something where I have a, a concentrate that I have applied to the water to hope to ease the pain and knowing that we have perhaps many more days. Using it on my first night is perhaps not the wisest, but I don't want my friend to be hurting. Uh, as you're all sitting around the campfire, uh, enjoying your rations and trying to lighten the mood, perhaps with uh, stories and things like that, um, I need you all to make a mental resistance roll. Oh, uh, shit. That is going to be your conviction plus five. Ooh! Just straight conviction? Yes. No domain action? Nope. It is just conviction plus five. Conviction Thanks. being one of the ways, the statistics. 
Wait, so conviction plus, plus we all get plus five? Yeah, the, a Not mental, me. the way that you make a mental resistance uh, oh. resolution test, um, oh, the, the, the formula oh. is just conviction plus five. We're not rolling anything. No, we, no, you will, and then you add And then you add, add your mental resistance. Right. Oh, right. okay, so. Uh, Sorry, I, I apologize. No, 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 so no, no, whenever okay. you make the roll. Four plus five for me is nine, plus six is 15. You got a 15, okay. I would get, like to twist this. Abs uh, do it. Or, uh, yeah. bump, twist to feed it. Bump it up. How many? Eleven. Okay. Nice. I got a hot sixteen. Okay. Oh, look you and I have two. rolled the same value twice. Oh, nice. Four, four, sixteen, sixteen. You, wow. you all feel a little strange, but again, nothing that doesn't isn't explained <sighs> by just being where you are. Yeah, you kind of have a, a you have slight headaches. Maybe uh, Jasper's leg is, is hurting a bit more than normal. Um, you, nothing you wouldn't expect to be happening. Nothing to cause immediate alarm. Uh, and with that, uh, if there's nothing else that you'd like to do, it, it, uh, Leo informs you that it's best to be getting to bed because you have to get going after uh, a night's rest. It's time to continue. So if there's anything that you would like to do uh, before you uh, I, presumably you'd, you'd like to set up some sort of a watch with uh, maybe, you know, every two hours uh, swap between the four of you, including Leo. He's, he's more than happy. He's hearty. He doesn't need much sleep, he tells you. Um, but other than that, the, the evening is yours before you need to uh, continue to the next day and hopefully find the first landmark. I'm very curious about what is in the woods. This is the farthest I've mm. been north. Uh, and I am dying to know if I could find more or unusual things, perhaps plants I've never seen before. But knowing how dangerous it is out there and without the misfare to guide me or or perhaps even warn me not to go, I will, having a full belly, drift off to sleep after uh, we determine a watch order. Yep. Well, it depends how old Dunnington's feeling. I don't, don't make any sacrifices on my account. Uh, well, I I'm guess, feeling fine. I guess my point is, is are you getting sleepy? Where I'm from, uh, that's called dancing with Mr. Brownstone. I point at his, uh, his water skin. Are you implying that I should take last watch so I can sleep this off? That's exactly what I'm implying. Then why don't you say that? I'll take first watch. It's been a, quite a while since I've been in a mist like this, but I'll be okay. Oh, is uh, oh, Jasper here? Is he, a little, is he always as touchy? Yes. Oh, I was worried it might be the weirdness. He's, uh, you know, he's been through a lot. And, uh... You know, we like to look out for him. That's so. I'm just trying to be, trying to be uh, mindful. All right, well, determine a watch order and let's get some sleep. I'm going to do my waltz with Mr. Brownstone and fall asleep in his gentle embrace. All right. Good night. I will finish my drink and, you know, use my... And I will make sure that I pull off um, my surcoat and I will, like... Take, you know, the, the, I probably would have spent a lot of coin to restore the, the, the dyes or the embroidery on the surcoat to basically, for yeah. this journey. Um, and I'll make sure that, you know, any dust or dirt is off of it. And I'll make sure I fold it up very, uh, very carefully and then just go to sleep in my, in my armor. Uh, I need you all to make, uh, awareness perception checks. If you are uh, disciplined in vigilance, you may use that instead. Otherwise, uh, you will roll 1d10, add your awareness, add your perception, and let me know what you got. Ooh, natural 10, natural fucking 10, natural fucking 10. Okay, well Damn, hold on. I'm we're, zooted. All right, all right we're, gonna, we're gonna hold right there for <laughs> yeah, a moment because we're gonna explain stuff. a new game mechanic. Oh ah. shit. Um, but first, tell me uh, what Kristoff and Balto got. And Balto get six perception. Okay. A 12. All right, uh, are you keeping your six? Using any twist? 
Uh, it could take two to bop it up to the eight. Just keep in mind we're, we're... that I am not necessarily going directly with these thresholds. It's just right. an idea to give you an idea of what's easy, medium, hard. Right? I'd say Balto let's... is fascinated with the new world. He's... Six. Yeah. Six is fine. Jasper, I am so excited for you and your amazing... Uh... <laughs> Natural Our ten. first ten. You got a, yes. crit a critical ten. So the way that this works, table. the way that <laughs> the way that this works with critical successes and failures on a natural one or a natural ten, you must re-roll to confirm the result. <gasps> if the subsequent That's roll right. matches, it is either a critical success or a critical fail, respectively. A critical success can be treated like rolling a fifteen mechanically, if that were to be <gasps> uh, important. Critical failures will generally result in something catastrophic happening. So please roll again, and let's see if you get another ten. Crit confirm. Spike a ten. Oh. So any other result does not matter. So you will just tell me what your total would have been with a ten. Awareness, right? It's Thirteen. A, yep. Awareness right plus your uh, perception plus ten. Oh, perception. Oh, I actually think I have perception. Oh. Yeah. So I have, uh, th uh, so 10, uh, five, th that's 15 total. Wonderful. 15 total. Uh, yes. You all take your turns, uh, staying as vigilant as you possibly can in this new strange place that you've never spent a night in, certainly. Uh, and it passes without incident. Uh, Kristoff especially Jasper, are extra alert to the sounds, the eeriness, the scratching and clawing that is just outside of your peripherals. It definitely seems as though Leo's advice of making a fire was a good idea. Outside of that, the night passes without incident except for Kristoff. No. You, you find that when your watch is over, when you're trying to sleep, you are assaulted with horrific nightmares. Uh, you have a pretty rough past. It's not uncommon for you to maybe have some, some nightmares of things that have happened in your lives, but in these nightmares, it's, it's never-ending forests. It's beasts you cannot see. It's definitely the, the feeling of the weirdness creeping into your mind ever so slightly. The crows. That's right. Always the crows. No! <laughs> Before long, Leo rousts you all, taking yeah. his watch being complete, making sure that it's it's time to get up. All right, all right, how'd you all sleep? First night in the woods. Like shit. <laughs> it's to be expected. Yeah, not the best. Not too bad. There's no time for breakfast. <sighs> We're gonna keep on moving, and we'll eat when we make camp later this evening. Is everyone ready? Should I cross off a ration of food for our dinner from the previous one? Yes, time? please oh. do, if you can. Oh. Um, I believe that you all had an additional extra one, uh, but you all I also- I will use that one. You all also started with the rations three. that came with your character creation process of being travelers, which I believe is three. Yeah, oh. so we are down to three again. We're, I did not write that on my Yeah, screen. I don't have it on here So either. I'm gonna so just, I'm just gonna do ration, ration and then do bubbles. Pips. <laughs> Uh, one bubble, two bubble, three bubble. <laughs> one pip, two pip, three pip. <laughs> you, Bubbles. you continue on your journey, and you've been following a river. It's not a, it's not a huge river. Uh, it doesn't seem to be rapidly flowing, um, but it's certainly not one that you would feel comfortable wading through. There are times where you lose sight of it. Leo takes you farther away. He seems to take you, you know, maybe in a direction that goes opposite of the river, but inevitably you you, you seem to come back to it. This day passes similarly to the other one until you reach a point where there is a large fallen tree trunk down and over above the river. He walks to the base of it and he says, all right, we got across. We're going up over the giant tree trunk and taking easy, nice and slow down on the other side. How's everyone think they can do that? And he looks at Jasper and he kind of looks down at your... Why are you looking at me, Leo? I'll be just fine. No, what? I'll carry you, Dunnington. <clears throat> that is going to be exactly what I'd suggest. Oh. Uh, would you maintain your dignity after that? We're in the middle of the woods with a mutated guide. Do you think I have any dignity? My dignity was whisked away in a single letter. 
stamped and signed by Camelot. Oh, all right, all right, enough about the letter. So you <laughs> you take a look at this makeshift tree bridge. It is this is a large tree. It is, it is large enough for you to walk on and not feel like you're doing any kind of a tightrope, but you know that if you put Jasper on your back, it is going to make things a lot more difficult. It's not impossible. You're strong. Uh, you, this might not even be the first time you've had to carry Jasper, uh, given his, his old wound. Uh, but you do notice that this giant tree is moss-covered. It looks like it might be a little slick. And uh, you take this into account. And uh, Leo looks at the reading and says, All right, I'm going to go first. I'll show you how it's done. Uh, I wouldn't have taken you here if uh, there were any beasties about, so don't worry about that. Take your time. And please, don't fall in the river. All right? And swiftly, he moves like a cat. You've been watching Leo move over the course of the last two days, but it's almost nothing like this, and he, he deftly, expertlessly uh, walks up this tree trunk as it goes up and up and up and up and up and over the river. As he gets to the other side, he kind of steps through the, the tree branches that are on the other side, using them as steps, sto stepping stones or a staircase to get to the other side of the river. And he kind of points where he's <coughs> stepping and makes note of what he's doing and says, Easiest pie. Who's next? Alto? I, I will go next, yes. Come I, on, I, come on. I, I'll be right there. So what I need you to do is make a resolution roll Felt it coming. of feats. And what feats are uh, is basically athletic displays of dexterousness, strength, uh, things like acrobatics, climbing, endurance, evasion, running, etc., etc. So if you are disciplined in either climbing or acrobatics, you may use that instead of just doing a straight feats roll. Otherwise, it is combativeness plus feats plus a 1d10. Uh, I get an 8. That's your total. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You Tim Curry across. I rolled a seven, but my it. my feet are one. You guys have a ton of twists. Twist it. We have tons of twists. Thank you, Chad. Well, don't be afraid to use them. Get to eleven at least. Well, you'd have no, to we use can't. three of these beans. Or, three. No, we can't. Three. We can use three to eleven. Okay. Sure. Well, that's half of what we have to cross. Oh, really? Yeah, that's half oh! of What if I use the survival point to give myself advantage? Uh, it is not advantage. You can use the survival point to re-roll, but you have to use the the, the, the next result. Wait a minute. Oh, Whether it's higher or lower. that's right. That's we have not used one of those. I it's, think this is so a good... So I can make things worse if I try to use Yeah, but that's point. fun. It's horseshit that the ten is also divisible by five. Yeah. Wait, but you have three already, so you don't even need so to use So are those these. really all dreads from a certain point of view? <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Uh, That's true. I will say, after this stream, we can redistribute the wealth if we'll, needed. We'll, we'll, we can have some sort of conversion. We, yeah, don't, we can have a conversion. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm saying. All right. I haven't even dreaded you yet. I have an eight. I know what I'm saying. <laughs> I have an eight. You're out of fucking I room. have an eight. Okay, an eight. Do you want, gonna it, 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 snap. Would you like to use a survival point to reroll? No, because I have more. It's more likely that I'll fuck myself on the reroll than I will. Okay. Than I will not. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Did you roll a six naturally? No, I rolled a seven. Oh, I know. Which is right here. Oh. And I have That's a plus mine. one. I have an eight. How? How easy could it be? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably easy. Just let it roll. He's an easy as pie. Balto begins to make this oh. treacherous climb. It's very slash wet. Acrobatic feet. It's very wet. Uh, and that you do. You notice that underneath of your boots, the the moss is thick. It's it's moist. It's kind of spongy. And you you do your best to try to make sure that you're standing on um, elements of bark as opposed to the the uh, the moss. And you are uh, climbing this this natural bridge. And as you reach the apex of this. Uh, this 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 log. Uh, I need you to make another feats check. I don't know why I look at the back of my character. <laughs> Desperately oh, looking for. There's gotta be something here. Win the game. Win game is right here. Win game. Yeah. Win game. Everybody. We won. 
Oh, that's cocked like crazy. Oh, that's cocked. Yeah, it doesn't count. Ooh. <laughs> Seven. Okay. Uh, you you find in a, in a moment of uh, misjudgment that your foot kind of goes out from underneath of you, and there's a moment where you are are worried that you're going to tip over, but then you catch your balance, and and uh, it is because you watched Leo do this first that you are uh, not struggling uh, with this, and you are able to make it to the other side. Take three quick uh, and, and grab you, a branch. Yes, yes, and you climb down, and he pats you on the back as you as you make it. He says, "Well done." All right, gentlemen, uh, are you coming over together? Well, it's, bald choke. It's very slick. Bald. I do not recommend going by your <laughs> <laughs> together. If Balto can do it, don't fucking look at me like that, Christoph. Get the fuck out of my way. <laughs> oh, 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 are you oh, sure, oh, Dunnington? Oh, oh, I'll, I'll just throw you right over me shoulder. I am a lord of House Dunnington. I uh -huh. had... Yep. A castle! Castle Blackmont. The Black Hydra does not need to be carried. I'm <laughs> and as he takes a step, I'm gonna grab him by his waist and throw him over my shoulder. Ah, you, I'm contesting it! You, yes, so if you I'm are contesting resisting, the you, go! You, Hit him you, in the back with the cane. Hold on, hold on. Yes, if you are resisting, you will have to roll a contest against each other. So what I would ask you to do, Kristoff, uh, is I would ask you to roll a combativeness feats check of strength. If you are disciplined in strength, you may use that instead of just your combativeness, plus your feats, plus your uh, 1d uh, 10. And then for, for Jasper, I think you're going to do the same thing. Yeah. I think it's strength. I feel like, yeah, it's exactly, yeah. So, so the feats roll. So you will, yes, you will roll a 1d 10 and add your combativeness and add your feats. Natural 10. Wow! I'm gonna confirm. So confirm your crit. Confirm. Oh! oh so nothing, nothing happens, so you get a, what is your total? 10 plus? It's an 18. I get an eight. So <laughs> I roll very well, I have plus zero. You, <laughs> you are not able to squirm out of Kristoff's grasp as <sighs> he grabs you, and in one swift motion, being so strong that he is, he throws you over his shoulder, holding you with one arm, and begins to, your, your walking stick in the other. He snatches it from you. He, you begin to then proceed over this bridge. Oh, come on, Dunnington. I'll give you at least a 50-50 chance of you sliding in. <laughs> at least this way it's about <laughs> 1 in 20. Uh, and I'm going to just try to balance with him <sighs> on my shoulder. Yes. Uh, if I can uh, go across the log. You feel Jasper squirming. He's not going willingly. Uh, and you have a feeling that this may increase the difficulty threshold for you as you cross this. Why did I buy you this armor? You are a sellsword! I, I need you to roll for me a combativeness feats acrobatics check. So if you have discipline in acrobatics... I don't, unfortunately. Okay. It's plus eight, though, so that's... That's pretty good. Yeah. I like our odds here. That's great. That's cocked, right? <laughs> no, that is not top. That's, a, that's, that's yeah, a two. It's on a, a lip. This... You get a ten? <sighs> um, I would like to use one of my survival points. Oh, oh, to oh that's, okay. that's reasonable. Okay. Yeah. Because I can do much better than that. Well, you can yeah. do one worse. Okay, it's better. So, so that, that is, is a, a 12? 12. Okay. Not bad. You begin to make your climb to the apex of this natural log bridge, and as you reach the apex, uh, Jasper just will not sit still. And he shifts, and he, he bucks, and you lose your center of, of balance, and you know that you're gonna lose your grip on Jasper. So you attempt to hurry up. You, you think, if I can just take a few more quick steps, I'll at least make it to the end of this, this log, where the, I can grab a handhold on one of those massive uh, um, branches. And as you lurch forward to attempt to grab this thing, you lose grip of Jasper and he plummets down into the river. Quit squirming, you're gonna get us bombed! I you ah! are going to awake the Hydra! Yeah! <laughs> and Hydra! it is with that stream, it, it's only a, a 10 foot, oh! it's only a 10 foot fall. <laughs> but with a large splash right on the bank of this river. He's not far, luckily. Leo goes, oh no, 
Grab him! Grab him! Fish him out! Whoa, fish him out! Whoa, quick! Whoa, what happened? Christoph, get down here! We need to fish him out! Boto, help me! And he immediately... You came! Jasper, the moment yes. you hit the water, you immediately fall asleep. My... We're in the blood of the hydrogen. <laughs> quickly! Quickly! Get him! Get him! Uh, we're gonna go in after him! Can, can, can I can touch, touch the water? How do I get them from yes, here? Just don't don't consume it! Get it in! Get him out! Get him out! Right, and he he gingerly. helps you. Uh Christoph, I'll you get are off the log descending. And, right. I if I have rope, I would throw uh I would throw Balto the rope, but like I'm wearing armor and I have shield and I have a sword, like I'm not going in. You see that Leo and where where Jasper has entered is is basically enough where Leo is on his knees and he's able to reach and grab forward and and so you don't have to wade in very far. You might get a little wet, okay. but Leo has told you as long as you don't get in your face, you should be okay to help fish him out. As soon as I understand that and I uh, uh, see that Jasper is within reach, I will put both of my arms underneath his and lift him up against my chest and just sort of start to shimmy backwards and make my way towards the bank of the river, shouting the entire time, uh, Christoph, Christoph, get down here. Uh, he does, you do. You have no, do. now that you don't uh, have Jasper in your grasp, you have no problem descending the rest of this way to the other side. Leo and Balto are able to pull Jasper uh, out of the, the water and Leo says, oh, this isn't good. This isn't good at all. There's a chance he's gonna be asleep for a week. What was wrong with that river? Oh, it's the weirdness. What else? Tainted the river good. That's why we don't drink the wall. He just couldn't let me fucking get across the fucking log. Oh, we can't stay here. For a whole week, no way. Uh-uh. And we're not gonna be able to carry him the whole way. What, what? How do we wake him? Oh, you shit. You, you, uh, you had a, a, a pouch I saw earlier of uh, herbs and things. Oh, you some some sort of medicine, man. Is he not magically asleep, or is he just made very tired? I, I, I have waking salts. I can, I can attempt. If you have anything that might be able to roust him, you best be starting brewing. I will. Quick, we'll, we'll draw him off. Bolt till you do your thing. Let's see what we can do. Uh, what are you uh, uh, endeavoring to do? I am going to, um, he's not injured, so I'm not gonna attempt first aid, certainly. No, he uh, uh, he didn't He didn't take any damage by falling in the water. He luckily mm. he did not land on the bank and, and, and break any bones or anything. I know that uh, I have some um, clay-like mineral that uh, it, uh, if you taste it, is very salty. Uh, it doesn't have much medicinal quality like that, but if you, uh, treat it the way that I have, that uh, uh, the smell is like sulfur times rotten eggs times a thousand. Yes. And that uh, I, I could put um, just a little bit underneath uh, his nose and then essentially like induce a, like not, not a sneeze, but like get him to breathe heavy and hard and he'll hopefully uh, wake up um, in, a, in the shock that it, that hits his brain in the back of his throat. It's an unpleasant experience, but I've used it a few times to get people uh, who have been knocked out awake quickly. And so is this something that you need to make on the spot or you have with you? Uh, I have the clay, but I need to um, uh, essentially activate it uh, using heat. Okay, mm. so then uh, you know this, uh, you tell Leo this, and he quickly makes a small fire. Uh, knowing that with with Jasper being out for potentially a week, you're not going anywhere anyway. Yes, so he quickly makes a fire, and I need you to make a reason healing check. Uh, and if you have Ooh. discipline in decoctions and elixirs, you may use that roll I instead do. of the healing roll. Hey. Okay. Hey. So you, I you set to work to brew this this tincture. I wait for it to um, uh, heat, and then very quickly I start to whisk it back and forth. And I know that uh, I have a very thin window when it's going to be most uh, uh, active. Uh, if I go too far past it, then it'll dull. Or if I don't go far enough, then the heat won't have uh, activated that smell. I'm smelling and watching the texture as... Ooh, nice. Pretty good. Domain, uh, in this place you'll use your discipline plus your way plus the 1d10. So I believe... Oh wait, discipline plus my way. So, so yes. Reason. So, so reason, my reason is five. Yep, and then you add whatever plus your six. decoctions and elixirs are. 
six. Okay. Plus eight is nineteen. 19. That's huge. You do an unbelievable job. I mean, this is a this is a mixture that you've made many times. Uh, like you said, you've used it on other people. You understand what you're doing. You are in your element, and you quickly whip this up. And uh, I'll I'll, I'll uh, hunker over and uh, uh, I'll say to Leo and to Krista, I'm going to apply it now. It is just about ready. Uh, when if he wakes up, stand the back. All right. And I will immediately apply just underneath the nose. Jasper immediately kicks back to life. <gasps> <laughs> I am. Oh, oh, dear God! That is, that is common. Oh, uh, fought, fought we lost you. Oh, oh, you all right? You dropped me. Oh, I dropped you. You yes, dropped you yourself. Dropped me. If you could have just stayed still. If you had done what a cell sword does and let me go myself. If you could have had a fucking ounce of humility. For two fucking seconds, <sighs> we were almost across. You did this to yourself. I have no sympathy. As they're talking, I'll look over to Leo. Is there oh, any, I'm filthy. any chance that he transforms or the waters affect him in other ways? Oh, hard to say. We'll have to keep a close eye on him. Uh, if I become as ugly as him, just kill me. <laughs> Oh, 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 <laughs> Take my head off! Uh, Take my head off! Gladly! Good stuff. I, no I, I've had taken. a pocket right here and just sort of look at him like... Uh, I think... The effect of knocking him out was probably the primary effect. Hopefully we won't see any mutations, but we'll keep an eye on it. Oh. If you, uh, grow any extra fingers, Jasper, or start seeing a new limb, let us know. <laughs> Our old waters here in this area, uh, so cursed. Not all of them, <clears throat> but that's why we got the natural bridge here. Try to avoid it, as long as you don't fall into the drake. Okay. We're doing it for Briarbrook, we're doing it for Briarbrook. Where's all my right, game? my lord, let's get you right up, my lord. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I'll thank you. you. <laughs> my cane, if you would, Mr. Reiner. I'll snatch it out. You spend a few moments, <laughs> maybe a half hour to an hour, sitting by this small fire that Leo had started uh, to to allow Balto to create his decoction. Thank uh, you, Balto. To, to dry out. You you you, you, you you get warm, you dry, and it's not long before Leo urges you all on, and it's time to leave. I will be very irritated, but I will eventually warm up. I'm yeah. dirty, but I, I'll mutter about it, but I will move on. The rest of the day uh, passes without incident. Uh, you you continue to hear the the noises and the the concern uh, of of uh, Leo at, at times where there might be threats, and it, it isn't long before you end the day finding the giant gnarled tree that Leo calls Sky Sun. Uh. It is the largest tree you may have ever seen. It's old. It's ancient. It doesn't have any leaves. It's it's this massive, gnarled mass of ancient wood. And this is where you set up camp for the evening. Uh, I need you all to make a mental resistance check. What kind of tree is that? It's enormous. Again, this is your conviction plus five plus your 1d10. 14. 10. <laughs> 17. Wow. Uh, 14, 17, and 10. Mr. Nightmare's over here. Uh-huh. Uh... -huh. uh you are sitting around the fire, and again, you, you can feel the effects of these, the weirdness on you, and, and Kristoff, it's not long before Leo says, Hey, Kristoff. Yeah, what, what? And he, lo he looks at you, and he points here, and you, that's, then, then you notice that you have a little bit of blood trickling out of your nose. Oh. Probably nothing. It's a sort of strain of... Carrying the Lord. Let me see. I probably could have got I'm, a good crack on your nose with my cane. No, I'm, I'm, I'm believe me, Bolto, I'm fine. I'm fine. You could take a look, but I mean, I've, I, it's not, not before. there. Ah, uh, ah, uh, not down back of throat. Ooh, I think we'll be okay. Eh, nothing can be done. Here, need a hanky? And he gives you uh, an unused uh, piece of cloth. It's clean. 
I, I appreciate your kindness. With that, again, he asks you all to uh, decide on your your uh, watch order for the evening. I'll stay up. I'll take first. Water. Ah, refreshing, healthy, crystal clear water. <laughs> Thanks <laughs> to the old mother. I will take a second again. Um, and uh, subtract another ration from your your uh, your oh, packs shit. if you are eating, if you are consuming food. Uh, oh, my food is been... being filled. Oh, my bubble is just. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fucking crows. Uh, ah, that's right. Dark wings, dark deeds, my lord father always used to say. You, you settle in for the evening. Your watches pass without incident. It, it seems like for all of his weirdness and strangeness <laughs> of that, Leo is doing a good job. You haven't encountered any horrific creatures. I mean, obviously the woods are treacherous, and you've you've witnessed that firsthand, especially with what happened to Jasper. But so far, so good. The next morning, you wake up, and Leo gathers everyone around as you're packing up your small camp, and he says, "All right, with any luck today, we'll get to the second landmark, the Broken Many a Stone, and then we're just a hop, skip, and a jump from Camelot. How's that sound?" I understand why others uh, fail at this. You have been a good guide, I think. Yes. Not... Oh, well, I appreciate that. It's very kind of you to say. Forgive me, Leo. I spoke hastily about your face and abilities. <laughs> no offense taken. <laughs> I am not myself when I am feeling my my old wound. So, thank you very much for everything you've done, and. I am confident we will make it to Camelot whole in one piece. Well, I'll appreciate it. Let's get a move on. That's right. Let's get this over with. Let's go. And you proceed. You're walking for a few hours. It's mid-morning. It's not quite after. It's not quite noon. It's not quite midday. It's mid-morning. And as you're walking towards where Leo is leading you to this menier stone, this broken menier stone. The mist is getting thicker. And Leo's looking around and he's he's moving a little less quickly. He says, oh, all right, well, I suppose we can, no, 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 no. And he reaches into his, uh, under his shirt and you see him pull out a, a charm that's around his necklace and he, he sticks it back in, he's like, all right, well, we have to make a judgment for all right, mm-hmm. And he seems to be talking to himself very, very quietly. It is then that, again, he makes the familiar sound, uh, the, the familiar motion uh, of the, the raised fist in the air to stop. And you all see this happen, and, and you stop. And he's about 20, 25 feet ahead of where you're at. Oh, a faithful guide. He immediately turns to you and puts his le- finger to his lips. More urgent than you've seen him do before. Oh, that's right. I will pull a coral and load my crossbow. It's, it's at as this, quietly as possible. It's at this moment that you realize the mist is rapidly getting thicker and thicker and thicker at a speed with which that you can see it. This isn't a gradual change. The, 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 the weirdness is, is rolling in. He... I'll draw my sword. He, he had turned to look at you, to, to tell you to be quiet. And he he turns all the way around towards you and stands up, reaches into his shirt again to pull out and look at this, this charm that he's wearing around his neck and he seems to tap it. And before any of you can say anything, a large 12-foot shadowy figure appears directly behind Leo, silent as death. Before any of before any of you can say anything, this dark figure moves faster than anything you've ever seen in your life, and two arms snatch Leo around the legs and the ribs. You hear his ribs cracking as these two uh, large arms and hands squeeze, and it is just then that you see two more arms come out. 
from behind this creature. It is the tallest humanoid thing you've ever seen in your life. The only thing not humanoid about it is that it has four arms. He yells in pain as he feels his ribs begin to crack and he says, Oh! Oh! Stag father, help me! Uh, rawr! And he is cut off as he is ripped in two by this creature using all four of its, its arms to absolutely shred Leo into pieces. Before you can react, I need all of you to make a mental resistance. No, 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 no shit. Oh, God. Oh. I have to get my book. Oh. Mental resistance, you say? Four, five, plus roll is 12. Ah! Hold on. 11? All right, uh, 12, thir wait. 13, and 11. You, I'm just writing down what you got. You may choose to do. Uh, I'm going to use one twist to get it to a 14. Okay. Thank you, chat. Thank you, chat. For the gifted chat. subs, we are so close. I'm, I'm, I'm 12, in. I'm 12. In. I get to, I'm gonna 11 it. I get to pull out the lovely rule book to, to consult some tables <laughs> and things. Uh, you, oh. you find uh, that this is Horrific. You have witnessed uh -huh. this poor Mist Fair Leo ripped in two. Uh, you've watched the viscera, his internal organs, spill out onto the ground before you. This alone raises the difficulty threshold of witnessing this horror. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not only that, you you look at the large shadowy figure, and it reminds you of the men here stone back in your village. They look very similar. The one in your village was wearing robes and had a horrific skull face, and this one is wearing heavy, heavy plate armor and has two swords hanging from its, uh, its waist. Uh, but you know this to be a four-dweller. None of you have ever seen one of these four-dwellers in the flesh, and it immediately racks your mind and your soul to your core. I need, ah! you, I need you all to roll a 1d10, and we're gonna see what you got on the torments table. <laughs> you feel your minds begin to break. Yeah. Like never number seven. Only one of you has probably experienced the absolute horror that this has happened. Should before. I re-roll if I got the same thing as one of them? Uh, Just to mix it up? Um, no, tell me what you got first, and then I'll let you Seven. Know. Also seven. Okay. I got a three. I got a 14 in my roll. <laughs> okay. My When I see this, my mind flashes, and I think of some of the things I saw before I arrived in Avalon, and it pales. Okay. You, you hear Leo's final words his absolute scream and imploring for you to run. Both Balto and Kristoff, you experience a phobia of the Four Dwellers, with which you have, did not know could have existed before this moment. If you had no fears before this, your singular only new fear, potentially for the rest of your life, would be the Four Dwellers. And Jasper. That's me. Despite your many decades, being a hardened, almost stoic, proud man, you begin to feel yourself well up in tears. And for the first time since you were a small boy, you don't openly sob, but you feel your cheeks become wet with tears as you begin to cry. And that last imploring command from Leo rings in your mind to run. That's really good. What's it ah! do? Ah! Um, I would like to as I am taken back to uh, the moment when uh, my dearest friend and my uh, my liege lord um, Benedict uh, uh, was completely uh, smashed by a mountain of a man with a huge uh, hammer and was completely crushed. And this takes me back, and I blink through, and I don't even realize that I'm crying. But as I am, I am as tears are running down my face. I would like to attempt to channel my battlefield uh, leadership ability, realizing that our guide and leader has been completely annihilated by a monster. Right. To attempt to 
basically try to look for and analyze and observe our environment to find the best means of escape and then shout out to my friends of where to go, etc. I love that. So what you will do for me is, well, first, let me let me just uh, tell you this. Um, your, uh, your crying on the Torben table is really uh, more of a um, uh, RP prompt. But for our poor Balto and Kristoff, the phobia of the fear dweller uh, has a mechanical portion. And it basically, mm -hmm. uh, from here on out, uh, and it, if you were to encounter another four dweller, you would suffer a minus two penalty on all of your rolls while being too close to one of these horrific, oh, wow. horrific creatures. Um, oh, Titus, brutal. not Benedict. Benedict was two all rolls? Sorry. It's all good. Yes, Jasper yes. knows that. Uh, but but that may not come into play right now. Just But remember, that is the mechanical uh, penalty for your phobia. Um, you uh, are, are, you're having this memory and you can feel your, again, your cheeks are wet with, with tears that is unfamiliar to you. This isn't something, that, you know, you don't cry, right? At least that you recall anytime soon. But you still are able to find yourself able to issue a command. You remember your leader-like nature and you are able to, to redouble uh, down on the command that Leo issued uh, by quickly surveying your surroundings, trying to find uh, potentially some sort of exit, and then issue a command. So the first thing I'll need you to do is make a resolution roll uh, of natural environment. Um, and if you are disciplined in any natural environment thing, let oh, me know. Well, certainly not. Uh, no, I'm not. Okay, then it will just be reason plus natural environment plus your 1d10. Oh no! I would like to use my a survival point. Sure. This is very, very serious. That's a reroll. Yep. Bop. Thank you, chat. Thank you, chat. Bop the biz. Ha. Huh. Nine. Okay. You uh, you are able to kind of steady yourself for a moment and take a look around and and you realize the not only do the words run ring in your mind from Leo, but you remember him telling you about staying close to the river. You do see that the river continues onward away from this horrific creature. And you, if you would like to, you can make a leadership role to tell your, com uh, your companions to run and follow you. Um, so to make a leadership role, you're going to uh, roll for, I think leadership is actually a domain. <gasps> So it's conviction uh, plus leadership plus a one d ten. Conviction yep. plus leadership. Yep. Which is so that's nine plus. I'm gonna. It's a ten. I'm gonna take. I rolled the natural one. Do oh, confirm your one. fail. That's an yes, extra, I need so, to confirm my fail. So you <gasps> need to confirm your fail. Four. Okay. So uh, it is not a critical fail. Uh, it is just a, a low roll. Just a one plus. Uh, you said you got a nine. A nine. Uh, you I, I'm going to survival. I'm going to survival dice because I have high leadership. So you've used what? Two of them? Two. Okay. I've used two. I, I know this is the first thing, but I just, you know. <laughs> no, no, no. This is good. Uh, so uh, it is conviction. Yes. Uh, so that is a uh, 10. Uh, that is a 15. Very good. Is. And I will, uh, as I look, as I almost kind of slows down, like when... It reminds me of that battlefield of literally in the heat of battle where time does seem to slow down. I'll serve my, my surroundings and I'll say, through the thicket where it's dense and down into the riverbed where it can't find us and cannot reach us. And I was like, come, my friends. I'm, I'm petrified. He has, he has the map, he has the, uh, the, 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 the. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, again! Yes. Ah! And I'm screaming, and I'm just gonna, I'm booking it the way that he. he and goes. in yeah. the moment, in the heat of battle, my battlefield commander and tactician experience comes back to me, especially as I see my friends. I am brought back to seeing men that I had commanded crying for their mothers as their entrails had been spilled out by an axe wound or or dying in horrible situations and I'm seeing my friends, fellow broken men like myself, brought down low in this moment and suddenly, so, you know, suddenly my inherent um, experience um, and leadership snaps back to me 
and I will attempt to lead them through a uh, dense thicket, dense foliage, even for as ma massive this thing is, I believe, I guess, if the trees are large and it would basically be having to slow down to weave through and get into lower ravines and into a creek bed, uh, that's going to be what I'm going to try to do. You you issue this command, and uh, <laughs> you issue it with the full hearty ability that you've you've developed over the years of you you being a leader and a tactician and and an advisor and balto and Kristoff, you you had found yourselves almost frozen in place uh from the, the fear of this creature and the ringing voice of jasper shakes you and brings you back snaps you back to reality as uh you will enjoy a plus two bonus to your roles due to the success wow. of Jasper's leadership oh, uh, uh, test for uh, a limited amount of time for the foreseeable future. And you follow <laughs> his command, you bolt. And it doesn't look like immediately this horrific four-dweller is, is chasing you. It seems to stand still and you see its head almost tilt quizzically as it watches you run. And you take off and it is not long before you feel that you've left it in the dust. Jasper is, is leading you as he's pointing out and he's, he's, he's surveyed the area and he leads you down as you yeah, follow the road. And until you're able to find a, a point where the, the, the river kind of dips down and, and low, goes low as the elevation kind of changes and there's a little bit of outcropping of rock yes. that you'd be able to get down and under and, and hide and catch your breath. Man, I'll, I'll probably, if it, as we're getting down, I'll say, uh, all right, I give me your shoulder, and as I'm gonna try to basically kind of uh, steady myself and then slide down into the low, uh, the lower creek bed, not avoiding the water, but then kind of ma making sure, never looking back once, not stopping to look back, only moving forward and leading my friends uh, to until I, we no longer hear it uh, uh, pursuing. Yeah, uh, you you find pretty quickly that this this creature is not pursuing you. It uh, it seems to be happy. With the uh, with the the one kill that it got, and uh, it had no problem letting you go, and you feel in the back of your mind that if it had really wanted to, it would not have let you go. Yeah. <gasps> there was no way that you would have been able to physically oh. outrun this demon, devil, human. It's hard to say. We should be fucking dead. Like the statues. Have you ever seen one of those things before? No. I wondered if they were even fucking real. My lady mother would tell me bedtime stories of the four claimers. And if I was a bad child, I'd be snatched out and devoured. My blood mixed into their morning porridge. But I didn't think they were that fast. It was a living men here. It pulled him apart like twigs for kindling. Aye, it let us fucking go. We couldn't have outrun that thing. Certainly not with me, no. Is he watching us? Is he fucking playing with us? Shh, quiet. If it is, we keep on moving. We know that after the men here stone, that it's the edge of the forest. We force march. We proceed on, we don't sleep. But which which way from from the the tree? From from the scarf under do we do we go? Is it is it north? We keep following the stream. Yes. He said that the creek leads its way, and even if we have to of twist course, and wind, of course, yes, perhaps yes. If, if if it was satisfied, if it's let us live this long, if it is sacrifice that it's satisfied with the sacrifice of of Leo, our guide. Then it will let us pass through its forest. And we will never pass this way again. All right, get up, let's go, let's go. Right now, right now, here we go, come on, let's go. All right, we move, follow the creek, and pray. Pray to the All Mother. And I will mutter to myself as I pr am basically muttering prayers to the All Mother, reminding myself, while it may be easier to just lay down and die, and it, it hurts so badly. But, and sometimes I will want to lay down and just let this thing kill me. But uh, I will remind myself that we were doing it for Briarbrook. And so I'll pray to the All-Mother for every last bit of strength and to push through the pain to go as basically force march 
um, until we re- get out of the forest. I will take a step forward and it, see a flash of color. But just as I step down, I realize that I've stepped on a small flower. And I pull my foot back and n- reaching down, realize that this is a, a flower I know has medicinal qualities unless the inner fronds have been crushed. <gasps> and discarding it, I will catch up to my brothers. Uh, no! You do this, and it is because of the, the, the friendship, uh, this, this brotherhood that you three have formed, that you find the resilience in each other and the All-Mother to continue. Uh, and you are hesitant at first. You're you're unsure. Uh, you feel lost without your guide, even though he told you what to look for, just in case the worst was to happen. You continue with the plan and what he laid out as the uh, the the way, without faltering. And it is only several hours that pass before you see up in the distance what you believe to be a broken menhir stone. It's maybe a few, I don't know, I don't know, maybe a thousand feet away, right? It's not, it's not close, but you can see it. The statues are, 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 are large. And even though this one is broken, the base of it is, is yeah, there's this like yeah mm-hmm. it's it's dark this stone that it's made of is is almost like a basalt right it's a dark Ooh. deep black stone uh, that is weird and unnatural and it sticks out uh, in the in the forest so you're able to see it from a good ways away. Oh God! I'll never look at one of those things again the same way. We walk careful. If we in look all the directions, if we see mist, we have to be like Leo. All right, no, you're right. It's just a fucking stone. It's just a stone. Stand behind me. And I'll pull my sword out and I'll have my shield. And uh, we'll approach the stone. Stay at least 25 feet away from it at all times, Kristoff. As you approach the stone and you're about 30 feet away, you realize that, yes, this is exactly what Leo was talking about. You're in the right place. This is great news. Then, without warning, from behind the back of this broken statue, a large human man steps out, unrevealing himself. This is a normal human man, but he's big. He's burly. He reminds you a lot of of Kristoff's build. And in his hand, he has a blackjack. He's hitting it against his hand, and he says, Well, 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 what have we here? Heading to Camelot, are we? Boys? And stepping out of the woods are three more brigands and bandits. What yeah. have you got? Give us your valuables, eh? What do you say? And nobody gets hurt. Oh, it's just a couple fucking brigands, eh? We I... don't want any trouble. We are humble travelers. We have nothing. Let us pass. And my friend, Christoph here, will not have to disembowel you with his sword. <laughs> oh, you have no valuables? Disembowel with a sword? What do you think we're waiting here for? Weakened, tired travelers. Kill them, boys. Take all they've got. And I'm going to need you all to roll for your turn order. As turn you order! Gone. Yeah! So, uh, please take a look at the map. I uh, drew it way too big once I realized how much movement we all have. Uh, this is going to be a really good opportunity for me to explain the, the rules of combat. Please place yourselves where you think you would be. Uh, the only thing I would like to I point out... Yeah is that number one is the guy who was behind the menu stone, and he is very clearly their leader. The other brigands that have come out from the uh, the, the tree line um, are clearly his lackeys. So, the way oh that this is going to work is uh, we have an overall, overall breakdown of combat. Combat it consists of rounds. 
Every time uh, we make a full rotation of what's happening in the battle, uh, there is a, uh, there is a, a that is the, a round. Every single round, we are going to determine the order of action. The order of action is determined by your speed plus a 1d10. So I'm going to need everybody to roll those now. Oh. Uh, let me jot down what I got here, and then I got to make a I'm couple more I'm pretty sure cards, I'm my done. battle... Um, so it's just, we just add speed, right? Yep. It is speed plus 1d10. Oh, yep, yep. Speed plus 1d10. Uh, I would like to use my unpredictable feature. Okay. Um, Do you need me to find what that does? I have it. Okay. This character has developed a unique combat technique relying on the element of surprise. At the start of every round before initiative is rolled, the character can choose an opponent that must roll two dice for initiative and keep the lowest. In addition, oh. the character has a plus, so me, I have a plus one bonus to all combat related rolls against the chosen opponent until the end of the fight. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. I might need you to That's an advantage. advantage. In a, in a, in so basically it's battle. rolling initiative at disadvantage. Okay. And then when I am fighting against him, I have a plus one bonus. So you're choosing the bandit I'm choosing leader. the leader. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> part of my, uh, part you're gonna of my, regret this. My slowness, I'm making four. These are just, they're gonna um, correspond to the token number. Sure. And my leadership effect has worn off, correct? Yes, that okay. is correct. Cool. Uh, it doesn't last long, but yeah. it saved your friends yeah. from being consumed by Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Uh, I just wanted to make sure Ford that. Weller. I just wanted to make sure. No, I thought about pocket ask. sand. It was a little on the nose, and it doesn't feel very Kristoff to me. No. I think you'd probably be. I have thoughts. Okay. Um, apologies. I'm almost done. No worries. Yeah. Just make one more so what did? Uh, also, check out how these. Go. Oh, I need to roll. It's Thirsty yes. Thursday, man. I'm not touching my. I'm such a fidgeter that I need to be very careful with this because uh, I just usually roll the d20 and immediately uh, start fidgeting oh, with it again. Sorry. You're good. You're good. You're good. Okay, so let me calculate the. I don't know if that's good or bad, but. I'm just saying that the d10s that came with this game really, really. They, they have roll a well. good spin. Okay, uh, what did everybody get? 16. Kristoff uh, got a 16, so you're currently in the lead. 16. Jasper got a 9. 15. 14, uh... 11. Oh, okay. 11, 9... Uh-oh. 15, 14... I'm not fast. 13. But that is... You said you got 11, Volto? 11, yes. And then 4. Okay. Yeah. I'm not wow, fast. I thought 11 was good. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, we, this determined, uh, we again, it's, it's 1d10 plus speed, determines your um, ability to uh, go in the order. The next part is in reverse speed order, we will call out what stance, oh, we are, what that. combat stance we are taking. Oh, that's right. You must oh, okay. decide quickly, but the reason it is in reverse order is the slowest people have to make the decision first, and the people who roll the highest will be able to react by choosing a stance that is most advantageous to them based on the previously made decisions. The different combat stances are standard stance, offensive stance, defensive stance, and movement. A standard stance doesn't change your statistics. An offensive stance gives you a higher attack at a cost of defense. A defensive stance gives you a higher defense at a cost of offense. And the movement speed, uh, the movement stance allows you to move twice your normal movement speed in a turn. So number four is going to uh, go offense. Jasper, what are you choosing? I'm taking d defense, not even close. Defense, Balto, what are you choosing? Offense. Offense. Number two is choosing offense. Number one is choosing uh, defense. Number three is choosing offense. Christoph, what are you choosing? Uh, I'm gonna choose defense. Smart. Okay, so smart. Is, uh, defense, offense, offense, offense. Awesome. So now what will happen is, Christoph, you are first. You can, on your turn, uh, you can use your movement and you can make an action. And once we have done that for everybody, we will start the round over and re-roll for our initiative and uh, determine the order of action every single round. Def Christoph, what are you doing? I start just like lunging for this guy, I pull my sword out and I'll yell to my friends, STAND BEHIND ME! And I'm gonna slash uh, for his throat. All right, you happens. can move 18 feet in a turn. A square is, three squares, is right? worth six feet of movement, so you have three squares of movement to move. Boom, boom, boom. Awesome. Have we determined, leader, how we're diagonalizing? 
Um, it's I, all one, I believe, right? Or no? I, I think everything is like one, like one, two, one, two, but we can talk about that. Oh, okay, sure. You know what okay. I mean? Yeah. It doesn't really specify, so we, we can talk about Rather that. Rather than 1.5, we're doing two to the diagonal. I think so. I that's, fine. Much, that's, yeah, fine. that's fine, that's fine. We can that's talk fine. about it. Well, yeah, we can yeah. always change that. I just want to make sure about I it. Anyway, I, make sure I, uh, I assume you are making an attack against yes. this uh, bandit leader. With my uh, broadsword. Okay. <laughs> Um, then what I need you to do is you're going to make an attack, and the way that you do that is you do your combativeness plus your domain or discipline that you That's use for well. fighting plus your attitude modifier plus your one d ten. So uh, you took the offensive stance, correct? I did. So you will uh, add your combativeness plus your discipline because I know that you are uh, disciplined in swords. Yes, I am. Um, so I have uh, two additional discipline. That's right. So I, and I have five combativeness, so That's it's right. plus seven. Yep. Uh, it should be five plus seven plus two plus your one d ten. That's correct. Holy uh, shit. Minus two, because I'm defensive. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said offensive. Yes. Okay. I'm defensive. Awesome. So then, yep. So you will you so, roll yeah. your one d ten, and add uh, ten, I believe. And add ten. That's right. Come on. Okay. Uh, that is a fourteen. Uh, you got higher than the bandit leader's passive defense, which is twelve. Okay. So to calculate damage, we look at your attack roll, which was. 12, sorry, 14. 14. 14. Add your weapon's damage, which is? Three. That is 16, minus the opponent's defense, which is 12. Oh no, you, that's, sorry. 14 is 17, plus three is 17. 17 minus 12 is five, and his protection is one. So he's going to take five points of damage. Did I do that math right? Oh, yes, you did. I believe so. So that's like his toughness. It's like wounds, folks. This is sexy. So, Kristoff, you... you <laughs> really is. Agree. It you, really is. You see this bandit leader step out from behind this broken men here stone, and he, he threatens you with your lives if you don't turn over your valuables. And you say, not today. Not on my watch. Yeah, and you no. charge him, and you brutally slash him across the... Uh, the chest as he attempts to get out of your way and he is unable to. And it is number three's turn. Number Over three, here. can number three get anywhere? He's gonna use his full movement uh, and he was in an offensive stance because he's not hes not entirely bright. And he's gonna just run as far as he can, which is only just three squares two, three, towards uh, the back line, people, if he can. One, two, two three. Uh, number right. one is in combat with you, Kristoff. So he's gonna make an attack roll. All right. Uh, that is a nine, uh, plus nine is 18. Uh, oh he took a defensive stance, so that's gonna be 16. Uh, 16. That hits. Okay, uh, so 16 plus three is What's 19. What's your or What is your uh, passive defense and your protection? My defense is 10 and my uh, protection is two. Oh, where's protection? So that's 12. Uh, you take 19 minus 12, you take seven points of damage. Holy this, shit. This bandit leader, <laughs> oh, is, you're okay. He, he, he reels, yeah. you're from, okay. he reels from this slash that you've, you've delivered and it's cut deep into his uh, makeshift leather armor, but it did provide him a tent, uh, a protection. And without a hesitation, he raises the blackjack high over his uh, head and he brings it down directly on top of your skull as you try to defend with your shield, but you are unable to, and it does a massive amount of damage. Um, oh. I have to ask, uh, did you check off all of your good health conditions? Are you I did. Yeah. So you, in, in this game, uh, we have a health condition table where I believe there are, and I don't have yeah, it right. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show I'm it gonna off. Take a look here, please do. I'm gonna take a look here. It is uh, six, no, five oh, good health conditions, there. five just okay health conditions, yeah. four bad, really bad four ones. critical, and one agony. Every time you take a wound, you mark one of those off every time you take a damage. And because in this instance, poor Kristoff has taken such a massive blow, he has used up all of his good bubbles and has dropped okay. to the okay condition. He is no longer in good health. So he will suffer from uh, a minus one penalty to most of his rolls moving forward, unless he can get some, some healing. Uh, then it is number two's turn. Uh, number two is going to try to run three squares ahead towards the back line. Oh. Uh, which I saw <laughs> his closest is our boy uh, Jasper. Yeah, yeah, so he can't reach you, but he yeah. runs to you. That is his That is his turn. Balto, you are up. You give them what for, Kristoff, and I will, uh, 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 pulling uh, the leather straps off of my wrist, 
um, immediately have my sling at the ready. I will reach down into my pa uh, pocket to pull out one of the smooth stones that I found along the creek. I will uh, uh, hitch it and I'm gonna whip this at the uh, man who's approaching us, number two. Okay. And I am going to make an attack roll at an off with an offensive uh, posture. Okay. Uh, I'm going to Except do number two. Okay. Uh, seven plus five is twelve. Yeah. And I think that's it. That hits. Great. Um, these guys don't have as much defense as their leader. It's clear that he uh, used all of their funds to bolster himself and not his crew. <sighs> Uh, so you you let loose with your sling and a, a, a sharp stone yeah. uh, easily uh, sails through the air and, and connects with this. Uh, I know, I'm used to protecting myself from small beasts, so I just whip it and with good accuracy smack him right in the forehead. At 12, my damage is 1, so I believe I do 13. Is yes, that? yes, you are going to add what you rolled, plus the damage from your sling, and then I'm going to subtract their defense and their protection, if they have any. And you are going to deal, what did you say, 13? 13. You're going to deal five points of damage to this guy. <laughs> I load another stone into my... Uh... I have a question, I've yes. been confused. Yeah. So, do I reduce my full defense from the attack? Yes, it is your defense yeah. plus whatever your protection is. Okay, when you said baseline defense, I got confused. Okay. So it should have been 17. Oh. Or sorry, uh, 14, no, 15, that 16. That changes a lot. Instead of, uh, 12. instead of 12. So you said 14 instead of 12 or 17 instead of 12? So, sorry, I told you I told you 12, but it actually it was 16. 16. So but then you would only take three points of damage. I would take three points of damage. Thank you. That's much nice. better. I was gonna say that's much better. Oh, that's you say, I thought you were. That's not just okay. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Why did I, I, I spend confused. so much no, money on it? No, we're learning. Yeah. We're learning. Yeah. 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 But we so, learned about the uh, the different health conditions. Yeah. Levels. Yes. So we instead did. of this this bandit leader draw, drawing uh, dropping the the blackjack directly on your head, yes. you do manage to catch it with your shield. But it is a devastating blow. This this man is incredibly strong, even for you, Kristoff, and you feel it rattle through your body. Um, I still have some movement. Correct? Yes, yeah, the stone, the stone hit this guy good. in the head, and he looks stunned. He is shocked. Uh, he was not prepared for you to loose a stone directly at him, and and he's bleeding. There's there's blood running down from his forehead. Jasper, run! <laughs> uh, and that is Jasper Cern. You're up. Um, I hate. To, I should know this. What is the range on the leadership on on um, my shouts? It's. I don't know if you have that handy. It's thirty feet. Wow. But oh. there are, uh, yeah, it's it's far. You you could easily reposition and be in range of everybody. And if you're not quite thirty, that's okay, because depending on how you roll, oh, could shit. affect the outcome of the leadership. I was uh, here. Was I here? I think because yeah. everything's in three, diagonal being one and a half is really elegant. That's yeah. right. It all it's all divisible. I trust you, right? Oh, okay. I thought about it a lot, and I didn't have a good answer, so okay. I trust you. Cool. Um, yeah. So you can use your movement, and now you can do what you like to do. Um, I will, uh, just, I'll, I'll walk over with my, uh, uh, my cane as I, I have my crossbow up and I'm surveying the scene and, uh, I will call out, uh, Kristoff, kill the one in front of you and immediately turn around the statue, murder the other two. Uh, and I will, uh, use a leadership, uh, check, yeah. uh, and attempt to basically do, uh, strategy. Um, yeah, so leadership role is just your leadership plus one d10. Works. If you are disciplined in strategy, you may use your strategy bonus instead of your straight leadership bonus. Bolto, kill that other one before he gets to us. I'll do my best. Nice. Uh, strategy. Yes. Um, it is conviction. Uh, so that is seventeen. Wow. And because I have the leader benefit, it uh, adds an additional plus one to my normal lead. Oh my, my goodness! Leadership. So you you bought a what is essentially a feat, right? You bought a you bought yes. an advantage. An advantage that made that improves your leadership skills. That is unreal. And that that reminds me, yes. he should have taken one more damage because I have the unpredictable because I have plus one that I forgot. Thank about. you. Uh, the main guy should have. The main guy. Just has one extra damage. No, that's good to know. Uh, you rolled uh, very well on the leadership roll. You yeah. ring out these commands, and yes. your your uh, party members hear this, and they are emboldened. They are they they know 
that you are the brilliant tactician that you are, and by following your orders, that will surely lead them to victory. You all have plus four bonus rolls. Oh, for holy! The next turn. Fuck. It's plus four for the next two turns. Amazing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put four. I'm gonna need three. you to remind me. That's do the best yep. you can. Okay. Yep. I got it's this. It's plus four for the next two rounds, not even this round included. It'll be two after this, right? Awesome. Uh, and then lastly is number four. Who is also going is to uh, actually cross tactic. behind number three and make his way towards Kristoff? Yep. All right, yeah, we'll stay there. Uh, and that is the end of the first round. I need you all to re-roll your uh, speed. Oh right, that's just a D10 plus our speed. Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay. I'm gonna use. I'm plus one against him already for the rest of the fight. Oh. I'm gonna almost like. Not like mechanically, but sort of duck behind the 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 Meneer stone, and uh, unpre be unpredictable against number four now. So I basically add my unpredictable debuff against four. Uh, are you? I'm sorry. Uh, you're just. Are you doing? You have to do it as a part of your turn, or are you just doing it? It's just every time initiatives rolled. Oh, okay. I can pick somebody and Thank be you. like. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So basically, I'm already buffed against him. I could make him disadvantaged on his initiative too. Oh. But I figure I'll make four disadvantage and I get the the buff. Okay. So, uh, number four is it needs to roll twice and pick the lowest. Okay, number four needs to not roll twice. not disadvantaged. Yes, I am. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, okay. That. Yep. Pick the lowest. Got it. Um, awesome. So let's go with uh, Christoph. What did you get first? Fifteen. You got fifteen. Wow. Okay. Uh, fifteen. Wait. Before we calculate this, do we add plus four to our round rolls? Yes. Oh. Oh. Yes. Nineteen. Holy shit. That's gonna change things a lot. Thank you, uh, Jasper. Uh, thank you, Jasper. <laughs> Holy 11. fuck. 11 for Jasper. So he's still going to go here, but then 11 would be here. No, that's there. Uh, what did you get, Jasper? Uh, sorry, what did you get? Balto, Balto? got tw uh, 12. Oh. Okay. So Balto's ahead of me. Oh, yeah. We are going to massacre. Well, we are going to massacre. They picked the maybe. wrong fucking trio we'll maybe. to fuck with. Maybe. All right, Kristoff, you are up my... Oh, no, I lied. Stances. In reverse uh, order, we are going to go with the stances. It is going to be aggressive stance. Uh, off offensive stance. Offensive stance. Offensive stance. Offensive. Offensive stance, Balto. Offensive. Offensive uh, Offensive stance in Kristoff. Everybody goes in. Uh, defensive for me. Ooh, okay, well done. I'm doing Smart. O, 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 and O. I don't even plus awesome. four. Yeah, uh, I mean, all right, Christoph, you're up. What all right, you do I do? will, uh, after blocking his blow, I'm going to try to almost like faint and be a little tricksy and like pull up and then attack from underneath my shield. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh that was a scary one. Yeah, uh, that was really scary. It was on a yeah, one, and it yeah. was like, nine. 23, no. 24. Tw that's your turn. 24 is my roll. 24. You are going to cut his fucking head off. Minus we'll say. 12. Uh, you you definitely hit. I did. Okay. You definitely hit. Yeah. Maybe uh, you should have worn armor. Ha ha! <laughs> <laughs> oh. This is devastating. You you <laughs> described the, 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 the motion that you made, um, and it is smooth. You are a soldier. Again, you don't see combat regularly, especially against other humanoids too often. I guess other humans. But you immediately fall right back into your calling as a soldier in a cell sword. And with one fluid motion, you double up on that initial cut that you made into his, his uh, leather armor. And you follow it up with an absolutely vicious slash, dealing 11 points of damage to this... Uh, to this bandit, Whoa. He, the bandit leader. He is looking a little rough. Oh uh, no! Yeah, they got some health. Yeah. Oh he, god! Oh, shit. He stumbles uh, for a moment and says, "Oh, curse you! I'm gonna send you to the All Mother." <gasps> and uh, he spits on the ground, and you see that it is—it's—it's it's a little red. Oh. God. Um, and he's looking no longer good. He's one shot. He's one shot. He's one shot. <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> the death spiral. Uh, thank you. Is just uh, number three is going to attempt to again advance on uh, the back line. So uh, there and there. 
Yep, and, and he, yep. he can't oh. make it. So he's he's closing in, and he's 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 Uh-oh. got a, he's got a crazed look in his eye. He's, he's oh no! It. Balto, you're up. I'm just gonna, uh, without saying anything, hearing the the words of Jasper uh, still ringing in my ears, I feel inspired, and I let a rock loose. Uh, he told me to kill number two, so I'm going to endeavor to hit him again. I'm going to roll for attack with Absolutely. my plus four. Uh, that was five. There was a five. There was a five. Yeah, uh, just confirm. Uh, confirm. Uh, five, ten, fourteen again. Fourteen. Yeah. And so that's if, if that oh, hits, shit. and I think that it does, then I will be doing fifteen of the damages minus his whatevers and 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 whatnots. Oh, and then you so your total attack is 15. yeah. My, my wow. two hit is fourteen, and my damage attack is. Uh, I don't have a language unit. For uh, it. You deal a massive blow to this guy again. He was kind of stunned and taken <laughs> off off guard. He he and and he 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 had trouble closing the distance to you. And you can see that he has a simple blade in his hand, and he's he's frustrated that you are pelting him with stones at a distance. And he's trying to get to you, and he can't. And he stumbles, and he uh, he actually takes to one knee for a moment. And and has to to shake his his head to kind of regain his composure. He's looking bad. I reach back into my pocket and I f- remember that not all of these rocks were just rounded and smooth. Some of them were cracked and have a sharp edge. And I pulled that one out and begin to reload my sling, ending my turn. Who do you attack? Two or three? I, I hit two. two. He's, hit, he's hit two twice. Uh, I see 1.53. Uh, I will. I will put myself between uh, Jasper and. Oh no! I'm gonna block your path. Yeah, yeah. Bandit Number Two is looking. You can, looking do, you can do that. You can do that. Okay, I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna put myself here, knowing that I'm re- truly engaged. Um, I'm such a fifth edition person. Yeah. In this game, will I have a negative benefit? Uh, any negatives for uh, using my sling in close combat? You know that you are physically unable to use a ranged weapon in close combat. <gasps> So, all I got is my mitts? Uh, you have, I, t- I told you initially beforehand that you would all have like a simple cutting hunting knife that it would be an absolute, like considered like a side weapon. Oh yeah, right? I, I'm like scraping In desperate roots and times, stuff. you would have a knife that is absolutely mm. capable of being wielded as a weapon. Great. I fumble for that in my back pocket as I see him get up. Okay. Jasper. Uh, I will, uh, I'll see this uh, guy barreling down, but I see that number two is taking two smacks and he's looking rough. I'm going to try to, uh, as as he's a little disoriented, I'm going to uh, lean hard on my cane and uh, aim my uh, my hand bow. And I hate to keep doing this, because I don't know if, because I said 24 for the attack. Yeah. Did you add the three for the broadsword, or should I have said 27? You should let me know, because okay. I, I didn't. Oh. Yeah, so he has three more damage. Perfect. Thank Just, you. Let's it might go. Matter. It, might matter. Uh, it does matter, and he still looks okay. Yeah. But, I, but it absolutely matters. Yeah. Jesus. I'm going to f- thunk as I pull the trigger, uh, loosing a coral at number two. Yeah. So you are going to again uh, roll your uh, combativeness plus your domain again, which for you guys is the throwing and shooting uh, instead of the close combat that Kristoff is using. Do I give? Do I get my leader? Do I get myself leadership? Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, so then, combativeness is one, five, plus shooting, uh, eight, plus combativeness, or plus offensive stance. Yep. Fourteen. Fourteen. Total? Yep. Uh, including the damage from your weapon? Oh, no. Oh, you added to the roll as well? Well, if, you, you, hit, you, if you hit, then you, which yeah, you Which you have. These guys don't have a lot of defense. Yes. So what's the total with the additional? It's another two. So oh, so 16? another 16, 16 with okay. the damage, yeah. 16 damage. Uh, to, to Bandit? So, to number two. To number two. As uh, he's, as I basically am trying to basically try to get one down so we can basically back into this corner and then basically rain just kite them. Um, this Bandit uh, was very clearly following the orders from his leader. And he stepped out from beneath, uh, from, from out of the brush and was... Uh, just following the commands that his superior had given him to to hopefully find some riches, he uh, uh, very quickly took two uh, stones to the face and and looked shocked and, and surprised. As now out of nowhere, as he's trying to regain his composure, a crossbow bolt sinks deep into his chest. He looks even more surprised. He clutches at his chest and he gasps, 
As blood begins to spill from his mouth and he falls face to ground into the dirt, dead. Oh, oh fuck. Which one was that? Two. Number two. Thank you. That will befall the rest of you if you do not let us pass. And then boop, boop. Uh, that was Jasper's turn. Number two is gone. Uh, number one is the bandit leader. Uh, he sees what is happening and realizes that uh, his his men have seen uh, the fall of, of one of their comrades and they look a little shaken. So he uh, steadies himself um, and he says, uh, he shouts out, All right, boys, we're double your effort. Don't give up now. We have to take them. Definitely not alive, <gasps> as he will make his own leadership roll. Oh no! An attempt to command his allies to kill you. Uh, and that is... He is a leader, leader after all. That's true. Uh, <clears throat> his allies seem to be emboldened a little bit. Mm. Uh, they, they, they looked like they were faltering, and, and they looked to the leader, but they, sh they nervously shake their heads yes and nod. And, uh, but they're not, they don't clearly seem to have the inner fire that all of you have. Well, they just watched the man die. Yeah, that's exactly right. And then it's number four's <laughs> turn. Yep. Uh, number four is going to use his movement, attempt to get behind yeah, uh, Kristoff. One, and, two, uh, three. And use his attack. Yep. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Kristoff is flanked. Oh, no. Oh, no. Thank oh, God and, you're unpredictable. And flank steak My is defense the best. is 14. Thank God you're a dirty sellsword. Delicious flank steak. Oh. You, this like, yeah, me too. So this too bandit maturity. sneaks up behind you, and uh, he <laughs> is feeling re-emboldened <laughs> by the leadership that the bandit leader has shown, and he attempts to get a cheap shot, uh, almost <gasps> like seeing if he can stab you in the kidneys. But you hear him coming a mile away. This is some green, untrained, yep. know-nothing thug, a and you boy. easily, quickly turn and catch his blade uh, with your sword, uh, knocking him his hand away before he can stab you in the back. Here it He's comes, like, it's gonna hurt. <laughs> yeah, he accidentally, he accidentally starts out loud. <laughs> and I will, oh. deflect, I will deflect his blade. Yeah. Uh, top of the round, reroll for the order. Oh my god. Ugh, plus do we, four. Do we still, natural oh. fucking 10. Roll again, confirm, confirm. Yeah. I'll yeah. confirm with this one. No, 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 that's still really good. When though. that happens, yeah, you must fucking be... explode. Yeah. <laughs> Three needs to make a disadvantage roll. Okay, okay. Uh, that's one. Or he might be out of range. It doesn't. Well, yeah, we'll save it. Um, nine. Uh, and Thirteen. Six. Holy shit. Twelve. Seventeen. That's not bad. So this will be the last inspiration round. Yes. And I'll do it. Yeah, I have yeah. mine. Yeah, I have mine. Okay. Um, what did you guys get? 16. 17. 13. Uh, Balto beats me. We got... All right, sorry. I low. I, I should goodness. have done this before I asked, because I it went in through one ear. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 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 that happens. That uh, happens. Totally happens. One, three, four, R... One, one, four, three. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, Christoph got A. 16. Okay, and you said Balto beat you? Yep. Yeah. Oh, 17. Wow. wow. Jasper, what'd you get? I grabbed the sharp knife, uh, yeah. rock. 13. Ho! Oh! 13. We've got Speedy Boys. Let's wow. go! Uh, okay, in, in reverse guys. order, These we're taking. Suck. Number three is going for offense. Number four is going for offense. Number one is going for defense. Smart. Oh. Jasper. Offense. offense. Offense, yeah. Christoph. Oh, that's me. Shit. Uh, defense, sorry. Balto. Offense. Okay. I am out for blood. Uh, Balto, you're up. The order changing every round and the posture thing is so fucking fun because yep. you know that other people are going. We're gonna talk a lot. Yeah, we're gonna talk a lot. Um, I Avalon and chill. If I hadn't made this, I might have had to make a close combat roll. But now that I have, I can offensively. Ah! I'm going to uh, uh, pull out the sharp rock and wham. Uh, uh, swing one at three. Let's see if I can crit again. I would really care for that. Nope, I do not. Uh, I'm going to get an 8-12 is how, uh, what I'm going to uh, attack 3 with. Uh, including the damage from your weapon? Oh. No, that's just the 2 hit. Yeah, uh, 12 hits. Yeah. Then so 13, 13 is the amount that you will uh, need to calculate the damage with. 13. 5. It's 5. Uh, you do 5 points of damage to, to, to number 3. He has not been wounded yet. 
and uh, you 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 swing and it hits him in the shoulder, and you can tell that it hurts. It's, ah, he winces as he as he grabs his shoulder, uh, but he continues to press on. Uh, I'll continue. I'll start circling this strange space. Uh, One point five two, and I will. Uh, Stop myself nice. right next to the dead body, Smart. looking down, hearing the final gurgling, drowning sound. Oh yeah! End of uh, my turn. Kristoff, I will continue the leader. Try to cut the head off the snake, and I'll make an attack. That would be a great time to have a dual-sided la- uh, lightsaber. It's pretty fun. Uh, <laughs> twenty-two to hit, and then uh, oh, twenty-five moly. for damage. Twenty-five. Excuse me. That's 12 points of damage. Let's fucking go. Uh, again, you you cut into this uh, guy's armor, and uh, it's surprisingly well made. Uh, you you can tell that you're getting somewhere, and he's slowing down and starting to breathe heavily. Um, but he is uh, still smiling this this slightly bloodied smile mm. as he is is coaxing you uh, into continue fighting. He's he's looking like he's still okay-ish. Uh, but you can tell that he's slowing down. This this fight is wearing on him for sure. So I block his buddy. I'm like, why won't you die? And yeah. I'm just like stabbing him, hitting him. Jasper, you're up. This is what normal bandits stat blocks are. If we'd fought the four dweller, <laughs> uh, I'll look and I will say, uh, Balto, kill that boy. I'm, I'll just say, Balto, kill the boy. As I'm going to uh, go, boop, boop. Yep. And then as I see that, you know, there's a sense. Of like the the bloodshed of like where, where time slows down, uh, and I'm starting to kind of get the memory of my my battlefield experience with my crossbow, and my practice has paid off. Staying uh, nimble with this, I will uh, once again reload. Obviously, lean on my uh, cane, pull out a, uh, a bolt, uh, uh, load it, and then aim at number one at the leader and uh, try to shoot him. Okay. Um, so you again, you'll use your combativeness plus your long range, uh, attack skill. Oh! oh, that was a fun one. So nine plus oh, four yeah. is thirteen. Plus uh, combativeness is fourteen. Uh, plus com, but plus offensive is twenty. Right? Hold on. Hold whoa, on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What, is, what is your what is your shooting and throwing? <laughs> one hundred and eight. Sorry. No, no. Shooting, and throwing <laughs> shooting and throwing is three. Okay. But then there's a little number there. Combativeness is one. Okay, so that's all you need to worry about. That's, you don't have to look up there. That's so that's three, four. four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. Plus the offensive. Plus offensive is, is six is ten. Or is it plus X? No, no, the offensive no, stat th- is plus two. The offensive stance you took at Oh no, adds three because your oh, creativity is so high. Yeah. What, what what stance are you? Offensive. I'm offensive. So it is My attack is plus six. That's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, plus four from my leadership. Didn't yes. You? So right, four leadership because of me. Yes. Right? Plus six offensive because of my stance. That's ten. Plus nine. Plus your roll, and that's it. But not nineteen. No, no that's our. Oh, oh, oh! Now. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. nineteen. His roll is I'm 19. sorry. 19. I'm sorry. Oh, because you were that far off when no. you said twenty. No, 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 no that's good. No, 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 you started yeah. going up to thirty. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you were dealing. 19, 19 points, points of damage, damage with the crossbow wow. ball. To number one. Number one. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that, chat. I did not realize that this was adding it in It already this. included that. Yeah. That yeah. is very helpful. Thank you. Uh, that is going to be another five points of damage to this bandit leader. And now he is looking bad. Uh, that's it? You you'll see. Who, a, you'll, who did you hit? Did you I hit one. Oh. So basically, I said kill the boy. And I I'm going to ask you yeah, for yeah, three. Okay. Yeah. So basically, kill the boy. I'm, I, I gesture over to him with my crossbow before whipping in the round. Decent Oof. shot, Dunnington. Uh, it is number one's turn, and he is starting to look like there's a little bit of fear in his eyes. I th- he starts to maybe realize that he bit off more than he could chew, mm, and the three of you mm. are a bit more seasoned than maybe he initially mm. thought. Uh, he's going to make an attack against Kristoff. Uh, I'll call out, uh, you soften them up, Reiner. Also, be glad that you didn't hit Reiner. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he got a natural 10. <gasps> But the crit was not confirmed. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, so it's going to be... Uh, ten. He's going to hit almost Oh, no! Uh, one, 
is going to be 20 to hit. Yeah, my defense is 14. Uh, plus the damage will end up being oh, 23. Gosh. Minus two. So 23, and then my is 16. Uh, that is seven points of damage to you, Chris. There's the seven points. Yeah. So he, it doesn't. Re leadership doesn't reduce damage, does it? No, nope. because okay. because unless you're parrying, your defense is static. Yep. If you had decided to take the parry action, right? Oh. You could then roll to uh, uh, attempt to increase your uh, uh, defense temporarily, uh, but you forego your action for the turn, and you can only parry if you are in a defensive or standard stance. You cannot uh, parry if you're in an offensive stance. I see. Okay. Uh, Very cool. Very yes. cool. I have a question about yes. the health condition. Yes. Uh, let's say that I've checked off all five of my good hits. Does that mean that I'm now in okay? Or yes. Uh, so I okay. That's devastating. So you're you're not well. You're bad. No, I'm I'm bad. 100. percent So I'm taking 10 damage. Poor Kristoff is looking rough, no. but he is giving this younger, stronger man a run for his money. Ah. And it, it is both of these men, Kristoff and this bandit leader know that only one of them is going to leave this forest alive. Oh, shit. Uh, it is number four's turn. Is number four the one behind Kristoff? Yeah, yeah. He yeah. panics. He thought for sure that this sneaking, backstabbing attack was going to work. And instead, he sees that he can reach Balto. And he turns and goes oh. after him. <gasps> there are no attacks of opportunity in this game. Uh, so he has no problem doing that. <laughs> yep. And he's going to make a melee attack against Balto. I cast Fireball. <laughs> Uh, that is going to be 16, 17 to hit. It hits. Okay. Uh, his damage is plus two sets, 19 uh, total for damage. What is your defense? Uh, 10. <laughs> I will take nine points of damage. You take this. nine points I of damage. I didn't see it coming. <laughs> you, oh, you, no. <laughs> Balto was a little no. uh, confident that this, no. that this uh, uh, young brigand was going to try to finish off Kristoff and, and didn't anticipate that he might turn around and, and attack. Five, six, uh, He sinks seven, a small dagger eight, up uh, in your nine. side underneath of your ribs. <laughs> <laughs> and as he, <laughs> no, as he withdraws no, it, the blood begins no, to flow. No. Uh, number three. No, oh. no, no, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> number three. Number three can't reach Balto. you, but he continues to try to chase down just three squares straight ahead to yeah. Balto and, and to, to uh, Jasper. He's running. Uh, and that is the end of the round. I need you all to reroll your uh, we, order. We, we, we lose our leadership. We lose our leadership. Oh, yeah. We should... <laughs> we should run! <laughs> we should, like, twist these. Yes, feel free. The initiatives? Yeah. Right? You can. I, I would certainly allow oh, you to. Confirm that, that crit. Roll. Confirm I'm that good. crit. Confirm, confirm that crit. What, what's a crit? Oh! Did you do it? I did it. So, mechanically, yeah! that counts as a 15. You rolled a 15. Okay. Before you even Holy add your speed. shit. That's massive. Okay. That's you have good. done an unbelievable thing by confirming, <gasps> by confirming your crit. What, that's Our first one in confirmed crit. That's one in well 100. done. Well done. Holy fuck. On an issue roll. Uh, no who are you, who are you my brain. using your, uh, your feature on? Your advantage. What's that? Who are you using your... Oh, him. So he's disadvantaged. The big guy. Yeah. 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 Okay, perfect. perfect. Let me reroll his. Uh, he rolled the exact same thing. And that's when suddenly the statue came to life. <laughs> <laughs> I, can I use two points to bring this up to... If I have... Wait. Five plus speed is nine. Um, no one's beating me. That's for sure. If I use three more, I will get a 12. Can I use, or should I save them? Uh, let's use them. Let's use them. Yeah. They're here. They're here. Yeah. Thank you, Chad. I will, I will have a 12 initiative. Do you want to go first, or shall I? Oh, what is your speed? Oh, my speed's only four. No, that means that you go first. Oh, oh wow. Well, yes. We just have a contract. Wow, about okay, yeah. So, three? just so I understand, 12. you both had 12? Yep. Yes. Did you use three? Yes. Okay. I used three. Uh, you both had 12? Yeah. We both burst into flames. Oh, 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 you said Jasper's faster than Balto? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, all right, Kristoff, you're up. This uh, this bandit leader's looking rough, but so are you. For those watching at home, Andy slid down three of the NPC's tent cards when we finally beat them with a 12. <laughs> um, you gotta kill this fucker. Oh, God. Uh, right now. I, yeah, I mean, all I can do stances. is attack. Oh, stances. Oh, exactly. Reverse stances. Uh, four is there going... 
pure offense. One is going yeah. pure offense. Yeah. Three is going pure offense. Yep. Balto. Defensive posture. Jasper. Offensive posture. Oh, ballsy. Kristoff. Uh, defensive, I have to. Okay, okay, I, I love this. Kristoff, you're up. What would you like to do? Uh, Remember, you do not have your plus four for this for this right. attack. Well, that was, yeah. So I'm just sort of wailing on him, and just hopefully one of them will hit. Six plus uh, ten is sixteen. That hits. Um, so it's nineteen total for my damage roll. Oh wow! Oh, he's you have to be end this fucker. Can I? Can I up it? Yeah, up it. Up it. Do three. <laughs> Twenty two. <laughs> Why haven't we been doing it? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, 22. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> you have been in this position before. You are not... Uh, you are not. You are a stranger to mortal combat, oh, let alone any kind of combat. Uh, you notice the familiar signs of a battle dragging on. The, the bandit leader is huffing and puffing. He's moving slower. His, his movements are not as sharp, as quick as they were before. Uh, how do you want to do this? <gasps> I we're fighting and we're he's he's getting me ah, 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 and he gets a really good blow on my head uh, and I'm <coughs> ah, but as I'm down and I stumble a little bit with my unpredictable nature I'm gonna sort of um, almost lunge with my shield to kind of as a feint to get him to dodge that way and as he dodges I'm gonna come around with my sword across his throat uh, and finish the. Slash, still sort of punched oh, over let's and go. panting you, as he uh, bleeds out. You have a dead. Hold on, don't flip that over yet. <gasps> you you have a deadly <laughs> precision with your blade, and without wasting too much energy, the, the 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 tip of your blade slices through his neck beautifully. He has this absolutely stunned look in his eyes as he drives his hand into his coat and he pulls out a concealed weapon to try to make one final stab attack <gasps> using his ability, Conceal Weapon. Oh. He's, gonna make a, he's gonna make a roll. What a pizza Don't shit! Don't flip it over yet. Don't flip it over yet. As he, as he reveals this concealed weapon with absolute shock and horror in his eyes, he, he makes a, a jerky quick movement as he flashes the weapon and tries to get to you, but it limply falls from his hand <gasps> as he falls to the ground dead. How much overkill did I do? Not that much. Did to I be do? With you. Did I do at least two? <clears throat> yes, okay. you did. You did. You did at least two. I forgot to subtract the two from the bad category, so which oh. would reduce the damage by two. Oh, oh. wow! Then yeah. you like almost exact him. Okay. <gasps> okay. Wow. Well done. So now you've over, He's dead. The blade hits the grass and then melts into the dirt. I acid blood from it. I am going <laughs> to uh, reload. Uh, put another coral in my uh, my hand bow, my crossbow, as I'm going to basically uh, get behind uh, Bolt. I'm going to get to the tree line, and I will say, your leader is dead, boys. We have a lifetime of experience on you. You can run away now, and we won't kill you. And I'm going to make a leadership check on my friends, basically, basically oh. kind of as... Uh, and to to under seeing these boys, understanding that, you know, having pity on them, um, now that the leader's dead, leadership check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which I do this. Yeah, and make sure you use your strategy. Uh, actually, hold on. This one's not strategy, no. I don't think. No, it's not. You are doing instead a... This is more, I would say, authority or peacekeeping, actually. Mm. You're attempting to basically uh, authority, it's make all the same. stand down. Yeah, so yeah. I, I'm assuming you're not disciplined in authority. Uh, no, not yet. That's okay, so you'll just, you won't get the bonus for the strategy, so, is all. Then that is conviction, right? Yeah. So that is ten plus uh four. Uh, ten plus five is fifteen. Okay. Uh, your companions get plus two for the next two. Oh, and including the my one, plus one. So for the first would be plus three. So, three. so you guys plus get plus three for the next two rounds. Can I use my movement after my attack? Yes. Okay. Then I would have backed up here and squared up shoulder to shoulder. Oh with yeah. Absolutely. Balto. And Absolutely. I would have gotten to the tree line. Yep. Okay. Probably right here. Um, oh, nope. Right here. Uh, <laughs> the, the, mist is, the mist is thick here. It's it's not overly dangerous, but it, it, 
the the sweet smell, the weird, strange, sickly scent of the of the weirdness mixing with the hot metallic smell of freshly spilled blood is is not pleasant on on your stomachs and minds. Uh, Balto, uh, it is your turn. Um, do I see them turning to run? They're hesitant. They are are undecided in this moment. They look like they might. But also, they 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 have a, a a a knowing look in their eyes that this might be the end for them either way. And I can't use my sling. You, you can cannot. back up, can't you? You oh. you can absolutely create distance. Can you just? Okay, I put my vintage Barlow Imperial two blade red brown folding knife away, and I back, <laughs> and I back up. <laughs> uh, also here. He can obviously and pursue you, but still. I will take a crack at number four. Number four. Great. Mm. I do really well. Do you want to use a, uh, a survival point? I'll use a three. survival point. Thank you for the survival Thank point, Thank you chat. for the you, survival you, points. You go over here, sir. That's better. That, there we that's go. a nine. That's a nine. Uh, that that's is a big fucking a nine. difference. That's definitely a nine. Uh, nine plus. Uh, I'm in defensive mode, so it's just 10, 13 on the dot. Okay. 13 uh, uh, to hit. That hits, so 14 damage. It's another five points of damage, uh, and he is looking okay. He hadn't really been wounded very much before. This is the oh, second that time that he's four. been hit. Well, that's you're right. limbering him up. Yeah, he's he looks okay. He okay. looks okay. I'm throwing tomatoes at him. Awesome. Uh, it is now number three's turn, uh, which is actually, he's done. Sorry, I'm. No, that's fine. I'll, I'll have yelled dead. out he's to, uh, 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 well, well done, Kristoff. Thank you. <laughs> Get behind me. Stand down, boys. Stand down. All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, number three is, they, they, they've seen the death of their leader. They are younger than he was. They look scared and confused. They are unsure where to go from here. The only thing that they're absolutely sure of is that you are much more seasoned than they initially thought, and they picked a fight with the wrong people. Number three and four, because they're both going noise between them, they're going to make uh, mental resilience checks. Break check! I mean, that's really the track. Back the tainted grail. Wow, Not that's the, I've yeah. seen I, folks in chat backing it. That's um, amazing. I uh, one of them rolled a natural ten, the other one rolled a natural one. So I am going to crit, confirm, and crit fail both. Oh my god! Oh my god! Which one? Which one first? Uh, the critical number ten. I'm going okay. to roll okay. the ten first. Okay. He does not crit confirm. Okay. Uh, and number, then crit the, fail. The confirm. failure. He does not, he also does not crit confirm. Uh, either way, the, which one is close to, closest to Kristoff? Four. Four is here. Four, thank you. Um, number three is the one who had the crit failure, and he's the one who goes first. He, there's this look that comes over him, a, a moment of panic, uh, and it, he is clearly broken. He is... His, his will to fight is no longer there. I'm going to roll on the routes table to oh. find out what the uh, what the condition is. That's R-O-U-T routes, everybody. Yep. He all of a sudden has this frenzied look on his face where he has lost all reason. And he knows that if he runs, he dies. If he stays, he dies. So he might as well try to make the best of it and take <gasps> as many with you as he can. Oh, oh my goodness. And he, can, he continues to press forward towards Jasper because, oh no. <laughs> because he looks oh like no. a wounded gazelle, for lack of a better yeah, phrase. Yeah. Is he able to make it to you? Oh, yeah. absolutely. All right, absolutely. He's going to yeah. take an attack. Yeah. He rolled a natural 10. I'm going to crit confirm. <gasps> I'm going to get one shot. He does not crit confirm. Oh. Oh. Uh, but that <gasps> is still... Uh, an 18 to hit. I stupidly took the offensive. Oh boy. So my defense is eight. You're, oh my goodness. Wow. You, That's nine. can you get one shot? There's no way, right? No, no, no. no, no, no. Uh, you're going you to take 12 eight. points of damage though. Oh. This, uh, this, You have an armor though. Oh, so yeah, what's your, that by did one? you make did you include armor? that? Did you oh, include? Well, minus, yeah, well, one. All right, so minus that's 11. One. So that's only 11 points of damage. 
Um, but he he spotted you across the battlefield like you were potentially the weakest of your friends, and he immediately drives this blade into the leg that you are clearly uh, not favoring. He he can see that you're favoring one of your legs. He goes for the leg that you're favoring to see if he can basically make you collapse. Is there massive damage in this game? No. Uh, I am. <laughs> well, technically, if you were to ever take 20 points of damage straight up, you die. You die. Wow. In one blow. Nobody's, ah! nobody's come that close. It's been about half. Because we only have 19 pips on our health <sighs> sheet. Right. So we gave you a chance, boys. Now you die screaming. <sighs> uh, um, no. I am down two points away from critical. Oh, boy. Two yeah. HP away from critical. Okay. Uh, number four uh, passed their uh, resiliency check and is going to make an attack on Kristoff. Bring it. <gasps> wow, I am just absolutely spiking these. This is a natural one. I have to crit confirm. <laughs> oh. That's confirm this one. Mean, confirm this oh, one. That's the opposite. Oh. I missed. Uh, I'm just going like 110, 110, yeah, 110. Yeah, holy shit. Uh, My shield uh, rings so true. Me one nine. He does not have enough. He, he is... He, he half-heartedly makes this attack. You can tell that his, his heart isn't really in it. He's scared. And you are easily able to knock away his dagger with uh, your shield. Uh, and it is a time to reroll. Uh, plus three from my leadership. And, and then make sure you minus, though, your your yep. penalties from yep. your condition. Yes, thank you. Uh, three is going to be the disadvantage. Uh, you don't I'm even gonna use to do that. It is a nightmare over here. Okay. Uh, they are looking slow. You Got do it, it, but I can I'm promise you, you already rolled as low as What's you got. I'm using a survival point. <clears throat> Thank you so much for getting a survival point. That's five. Uh, five I'm gonna use subs. one as well. Thank That's you. five gifted subs. It's extremely okay, so helpful. I just, wanna, I just want to note, though. Hold on, Jasper. That is your third. You've used your, or you're saying you're re- We're using from the. Oh, I was using it for the pool. The okay, pool. so just you had used two. I used two. So did you cash in one back? I had previously. I was basically hoping to. I was basically going to do a new one from that, but I can basically either cash, uh, then refill, it, and then do use it. It would be more helpful between sessions, since they don't recover a long rest, if you use them up and then purchase new ones to use. If so you then... Okay. Think, just yeah, for me sure, to remember. Yeah. Oh, I, you've used how many total? This will be your third one. No, I think I used another one, didn't I? I have you marked down for two that you I used. don't think so. I've used... this. I believe this is my fourth. Okay. I'm gonna, I, I will just I will err on that the side feels, of not not affecting me. Correct. So what I'll do for now is I mean, I'm just going to tally how me. many you've used. Yeah. And then we can remove the appropriate number from yep. the bucket at the end. Is that reasonable? Yeah, that works wonderful. How Thank did you. anyone else use uh, I survival used points? Survival. Uh, I just used one. You just so that's used my one? second one. Okay. I don't think I've used. I don't one. think I you did one? either. I don't think I have. I don't think so. Okay. Cool. Yeah, we'll we will shore up everybody's survival points at the end of the session. Thank you. We'll do it after the end of the session. I think that's the cleanest way to do it. Uh, what did you guys get for speed? Thirteen. Ten. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, minus two is fourteen. You maintain the exact same <gasps> movement. Oh. Wow. Uh Christoph, you're up. Uh I will stance. S- yes, stances. I'm sorry. No. Thank you for reminding me. In reverse order, f- they're taking the offensive stance, offensive stance. They don't know what else to do other than to attempt to kill you because they are either maintained their mental or they are frenzied. Uh, Balto, what are you doing? I'm hurt. Oh, off- quickly. Uh, offensive. Quickly. Offensive. Uh, okay. Jasper. Offensive. I'm pissed. Okay. Offensive. Okay. Kristoff, yeah. you're up. Uh, seeing that this, that three is maddened and going after Dunnington, um, and feeling okay, even though I'm, I'm hurt, he's thinking of his friends first. He's going to turn and, uh, as basically like just from behind, he's going to try to lunge in the back of the sky. Three is in trouble. Come on. Come on. Three is fucked. Come on. That's not what I meant. I'm gonna use my last survival point. Use your last survival point. Because I really want to kill this guy. Okay. Come on. Oh, meant to be. Meant to be. Two uh, plus 14. Uh, so 14, two. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, minus two is 18. But plus my three. I got that, okay. okay. Cool. 18 total? 18 to hit. And oh, 18 to hit hits. Yeah, 21 yep. for damage. Damn. <laughs> Holy fuck. 
Oh, you! This, these, these are untrained, <laughs> under-armored, under, yeah. under-weaponed, uh, poor pe- uh, guys who just got in over their head. I was only kidding. You, you, with the blink of an eye, uh, faster than a man of your uh, apparent age uh, appears to be able to move, but you do, and you, in one swift motion, cut him uh, from hip to upper shoulder across his back and he uh, falls into the dirt. Uh, he is going to, though, use his concealed weapon to see uh, if he is able to make one uh, final attack on, uh, on, on Jasper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You slice his spine in half, good job. As as he feels this strike uh, hit him in the back, uh, his his right arm uh, flies up and the, the concealed weapon goes spiraling up into the, the air through the woods off into the darkness as he falls into the dirt, dead. Damn. Uh, that was number three. As he falls, I will see uh, Jasper more clearly. Uh, are, you, are you bleeding? Where, where yes. Are you? No. He got me in my uh, in my left leg, so I am like I'm bleeding profusely from the thigh. I'm still weak, but I'll say uh, <laughs> red's a good color on you, Dunnington. Uh, and I'm going to oh, turn and that. I'm going to move one step step back and just try to sort of get in this guy's face. Yeah, it absolutely. looks better on them, Jasper. Uh, now that I was gonna try to smack him with my cane to kill him, <laughs> uh, I now have the ability and the freedom, and I'll say, we gave you your chance, and, uh, I'm gonna reload another coral and just, uh, uh shoot my crossbow. Yeah. Um, I am going to roll. Uh, you are, no, no, you're good. Uh, I just want to make sure that, that, um, Kristoff is not standing between you and the bandit because that oh. will make it harder for you to hit. Oh. And I don't think he is. I think uh, you've got a clear shot. If uh, I can just move here. Yeah, if that's, that's better. You if shift out of the way to make sure that you have a clean shot. Um, so then, uh, if we count, uh, nine with my, what you call it, with my leadership, minus two because I'm weak, um, then plus my offensive. Plus my offensive is 13 to hit, 15 damage. Yeah, 13 hits. Uh, did you fi- minus your thing? I did. Okay. And 15 is the total. 15 damage. damage. Um, the the crossbow bolt. Uh, you're 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 in a lot of pain. Mm-hmm. It's it's harder for you to aim. Yeah. And you pull the trigger and, and there's a little bit of kickback on the on the crossbow uh, from a little bit of recoil, uh, but you do still find your mark as it's the crossbow bolt sinks deep into his left bicep, uh, and he is looking wounded, but he's not down yet. Uh, Balto, you're up. You're open, Balto. Take the shot. I uh, reach down, uh, keeping uh, one hand on my my wound, making sure that the pressure is there and I can still feel the blood creasing between my fingers. I'll reach down and pick up one of the stones that uh, I had just used to knock out, uh, to kill one of the other men, and, uh, or to at least injure that man. I'll put it in my sling and... <sighs> Let's go! And I will release, uh, attempting to hit number four. Yeah. Yeah, you got a clear shot. Uh, you want to just use one of your... Uh, you You're offensive. You are offensive, yeah. I think you should uh, just yeah, that just gives me the, uh, the eight. Kill him! So I feel like I should probably... Yeah, use roll. one of your things. Use a survival. Use Thank thing. you for the survival points. Thank you. And survival. in a normal game, obviously we are powerful because of you all. That's not That's standard. Right. Ah, let's fucking yeah, you go! you felt it. You felt I it. felt it. Yeah. Nine. Fourteen. Wonderful. Uh... The oh, and so it's fifteen with the damage. Perfect. The uh, this brigand, this lone brigand, who is 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 all alone, and uh, he had a frenzied look about him. He doesn't look quite right. You know from your 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 previous fights that a man in his position would not stick around. There's something about this place, the weirdness, got to him. Maybe shook him. And, and caused him to be a bit more aggressive and frenzy, frenzy that oh he otherwise gosh. would have. With the bolt in his left bicep, he's ah, he's screaming, wincing in pain, and b- just as he uh, hears a whistling, and uh, there is a sickening crack as the stone catches him in his left eye, and you hear the orbital crack, uh, oh, and he brutal. falls backwards into the dirt, dead. His eyeball exploded like a fucking grape. Yeah. Oh. He did. He do, It is. It is such a devastating blow. He doesn't even have time to reach for his concealed oh. weapon. 
uh, with with this with this crossbow bolt sticking out of his bicep, and a calm, a quiet. I said a calm, a quiet. I say, I say. Falls over the the wood. You are yeah. all badly beaten, bruised, bleeding, wounded, but you know that the edge of the forest is not far. In this moment, there's no more noise. There are no more brigands. You have a moment of peace. Yeah, I suppose. Bolto, you don't have... Bolto! Something for her to mount for us. I have what I brought with me. Take care of yourself first. If you die, then the both of us die. You, I am okay. You know that you have enough supplies with you to care for each of you uh, many times over. You also know that whatever healing, wound treatment you might apply takes time. Applying it today is just the first step. You'll have to check on these wounds tomorrow and the next day to make sure that they don't become infected, that the healing is, is working. But you have time and the supplies to make sure that you and your friends are okay. I get to work, and uh, seeing my own wound being okay, I um, pull out uh, the linens that I brought with me and just sort of give myself a quick mummy uh, wrap field dressing. Um, who, who, who is hurt? And I, I will look at both of uh, uh, Christoph and Jasper to get a sense of who is the most injured. Do I know that right away, or do I need to have some sort of? Uh... No, you would. You'd be able to easily look at them without the heat of battle. Once over, check them, and from a meta perspective, uh, they can tell you who is more wounded uh, mechanically. Oh, look at him! Dunnington's on death's door. Oh, for me, it's just a flesh wound. I'll be okay. Lie, lie down in the grass. Um, I will have uh, just drop my crossbow. Um, and lean up against a tree and slid down, dropping my cane as soon as I'm as soon as I'm like uh, safely down. <sighs> Do what you can. How bad is it? I have yet to look, and I um, uh, will examine uh, the injury. And um, it is a serious injury. I will. Need it feels to, like a serious injury. I will need to close it before I can treat it with medicine, and then. It will be some time before it Give me some water first. Okay, then I'll pull out my uh, mug and fill it with water and put uh, an extra drop in before uh, handing it to oh, you. You're a good okay. man, Bob. Okay. okay. I, I down it, I guzzle it. I'm not trying to like sip at it. Okay. Uh, that would be a very aggressive numbing uh, <laughs> sensation, um, but it's very effective and uh, I get to work. I actually, uh, I have a small sewing kit that I can keep with me, and I will uh, work it through the wound um, after uh, getting it as, as clean as I, uh, as I can, hoping that there wasn't anything magical or poison uh, venomous, poisonous on the blade. And uh, pretty quickly, I ha I'm lifting your leg, as painful as that might be, I'm lifting it up so that I can get fabrics underneath it so that I can wrap it in total until finally, I come around and this is the the jerk. <laughs> I, I, I scream. I'll my my scream, even though I'm I presume I'm wounded, but like just that, I'll it'll be echoing through the the forest. I tighten it to <laughs> I feel that it's gonna hold, and then make a quick knot, uh, keeping uh, uh, with my knife uh, as much fabric as I can, given how precious that is. What did what did Bo, uh, what did Leo say? Easy as pie. Uh, uh, you, Thank you. You investigate the wound before you do all these things, and you do recognize that there is no poison. It is okay. this is a normal blade wound, uh, as gruesome and as brutal as it may be. There doesn't appear to be any uh, lasting, lingering poisonous effects. Uh, what I need you to do, though, is make a uh, healing check, which is the reason way, and you're going to be doing first aid. You are not going to be using your decoctions and elixir discipline. You're going to be using first aid because it's going to require you to sew, clean, and bandage the wound. Does the outcome of this roll actually change his health condition? 
Yes, so the way the healing will work in this game is that it can only be done once per day, per person that you heal. Uh, because of what I was explaining earlier, these wounds take treatment. It is This is not magic. This is very much a biological process of healing that will need to be okay. done. You but have once the, per day per player. Absolutely. Okay. So you will make a uh, appropriate healing roll. Uh, we will take a look at what you roll and what the DC is. Um, I will say that that it, as an example for a critical fail, if you were to fail this or you were not a medicine man, <laughs> you could potentially make the wound worse, dealing yeah, damage yeah, to your friends. Great, yeah, yeah, great. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So I would That's like you to make awesome. a first aid roll if you are disciplined in it. Remember to add that to it. You do not have your leadership uh, 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 strength anymore. And if you are in not good condition, you need to make sure you take that into account as well. That's right. I have a negative one. Okay. But this is your. This is where you're a Viking, as one would say. Survival. I think I'll use a survival point. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Could be worse. Okay. There we go. I'll take that. Thirteen. Awesome. Uh, that is a successful check. Wait. Wait. No. 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 13. No. It's got to be way more than that. Eight plus, plus six is, is fourteen. Yeah. No, no, oh, I, I get negative one. So oh. let me let me do it. Sorry. It's five plus <laughs> eight is thirteen plus it's another five is eighteen. Beautiful. Okay. Even better. Uh, you. I, say, I <laughs> forgot to add the reason. <laughs> yeah. okay. I had the it's healing. Okay. <laughs> okay. We, you get to work. You are in your element. Just as Kristoff so expertly dispatched these brigands, yeah. you expertly sew your friend's good leg back together, hoping. Praying to the All Mother that he doesn't walk away with another lingering injury. Uh, you do so well that you will heal two. Uh, you will heal two points on your health scale, Mike. Okay. Uh, and I believe because of uh, one of the things that you took, one of your advantages, you get an additional point of healing. Or what, oh yeah, what was yes, that of your uh, medicine worker, miracle worker. Feature. Oh, I'll tell you. Shit. I, I, have, I, would, I have that. I definitely read up. that before we played tonight. <laughs> I'm on, I see, wasn't working on see, the, I remember, the overlay that we're in right now. I remember now. some things. Yeah. I remember nice. something. I'm looking out for miracle you. Miracle worker. So Let's miracle worker go. is an advantage, very much like a feat in D and D that that uh, uh, our good friend Balto has taken, which increases his healing power. Being versed in medical knowledge from the continent, which is where you're from, the character is exceptionally skilled at soothing pain and curing the most severe of afflictions. This character gains a plus two bonus to healing rolls and plus oh. one to compassion rolls. Additionally, when the character makes a healing roll to save a person in agony, the no. difficulty, and you're not in, in agony, nope. it, it basically reduces the DC one tier. Okay, so it didn't it didn't provide any additional healing, but it added a higher roll, plus which two. is great. Uh, which so would actually put you, what, 20. to 20? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say in that case, because you passed uh, by such a large margin, I will give you the extra heal anyway. And so, uh, Jasper, you're gonna heal three, three points. points off of okay. your uh, health condition. And water into wine. Provided uh, this wound doesn't uh, get dirty and you keep it clean Necrotized. and Balto continues yeah, to uh, continues to um, treat you uh, in the following days uh, Balto thinks you're going to pull through what is your current thank health you. condition after this I am okay I'm afraid thank, the, awesome thank god I'm afraid the leg will be the same um, <laughs> while that's happening uh, my ears are ringing because it was all like blackjack hit so I got hit in the face oh, yeah. maybe like one of my ribs is broken Concussive. or something um, I will, uh, I'll walk up back to the leader and I'll say, I see how fucking good these saves were. Uh, and I'm gonna, <laughs> <laughs> I loot the body! I don't yeah! Know else to say yeah this. That's exactly what you would fucking do! <laughs> yeah. I'll call out after I'm like calming down. I don't know how it was possible, Kristoff, but you're even uglier than you were before. <laughs> <sighs> uh, you find. By going through uh, not only this body, I'll, I'll say that you started with him, but you, yeah, you gave I would him all go through all of them. Yeah. Uh, you find a total of 23 opals, uh, which are units of currency okay. in, in this world. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you are more than welcome to divvy them up however you see fit. Uh, you also <laughs> notice that while you're going over the uh, younger brigands, that they were starting to sow signs of mutation. <gasps> They didn't seem to be as protected oh, from the weirdness yeah. as maybe their leader was. Uh, and that is evident because the leader had some sort of a rock, uh, 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 like, totem on him that had a rune wristed into this, this, this uh, you know, 
pebble, like a large pebble. Uh, and you can tell that it is it has a warmth of a protective magic on it as well. So and then those are the, the two items that you find. Uh, it is it is apparent that this this protective stone it won't last long, but it is how he was able to protect himself from the weirdness, whereas these uh, other younger brigands were not so fortunate. Um, I will put them all in whatever like main pouch that I found, yeah. and I'll walk up to uh, up to uh, fucking to Jasper, and I'll say, uh, "I'd rather be lucky than uh, pretty," and I'll throw you the coin purse of all of everything that I found. Twenty-three total to- total obols. That that brings us to forty-three. We actually might be able to afford some good fucking wine. <laughs> When we get to Camelot. Well, well, Thank not, the old mother. Let's not spend it all in one place. And to be fair, it wasn't the fucking old mother that found it. It was me. All right? <laughs> we will be judicious. Thank you for trusting me. Uh, just for uh, clarity, because I see people asking in chat, uh, you, you take a look at their weapons and armor. Uh, it's not as well made as the no. stuff that you have. Right, especially you, Kristoff. No, I wouldn't. Uh, yeah. you, you might be, a, you know, if you were feeling like one of your daggers was in bad shape, maybe you'd be able to swap it out, but you don't necessarily feel the need to, to mess with any of their gear. Oh, wow. It's all... LP50 blunt. laser repeater. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll look down and I'll say, well, he was kind enough to not stain my uh, surcoat. Silver linings, Balto. Silver linings. Christoph, you're next. Come on. Yeah, all right. Uh, like I said, it's just a flesh wound. I'm okay, but I'll take it if you got it. A look, and I'm sure it's just like black almost. And yeah. Blood. Bruises. Instant bruising. It, I mean, it is, it is welts. It's welling up. You can see these contusions are forming very quickly. Uh, and you would have the ability to help treat the pain. Uh, it's not as easy to treat these kind of wounds as it is to sew up somebody in staunch bleeding. With such heavy bleeding, I actually make a mixture of vinegar and salt to thin his blood. Oh. To endeavor to make sure you avoid any clotting or old aspirin. along those lines. And I, um, uh, sort of tenderly touch the wound to, <sighs> to make sure that it, uh, uh... Oh, I've had way worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so in this case, give me a, uh, a de- decoctions and elixirs roll, since you're mixing something up on the spot. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. I love sure, that. For sure, for sure. Oh! Man, that one is yes! really good. I really Keep like that, that one. one. Keep that's that one separated. That's the one. That's the Don't one. Don't forget, Holy you shit. get plus two from the, uh, the feature that you took, the advantage that you took. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're a miracle worker. 17. I'm from the okay. government. The uh, right. uh, nine plus plus five plus five. So that's twenty one. Twenty one. You also heal three points of uh, on your healing health condition uh, chart. Amazing. Um, it should be even higher than that. You. It takes it takes a lot of time to uh, take effect, right? This 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 mixture that Balto has has whipped up. It takes time to to set in, but you can feel. Uh, that it's the wounds are not so the bruises are not so painful and they actually diminish in color. Not they're not as they're not as nearly as bad as they were. The, it has the intended effect of thinning your blood and not uh, have, you know risking uh, horrific clots or, or anything like that. And you are also healed three. Oh, that's good stuff. Oh, it's a miracle anyone on the continent fucking dies with meds like that. The red dra- death is far more powerful than these natural medicines. All right, Dunnington. Up you go, my lord. And I'll reach my hand down. Uh, we should keep moving. If we don't make it to Camelot before long, we're not going to survive out here. Only a few more days of travel, and then we will be able to... I'll grab... Oh, sorry. Find salvation. We're pretty close, aren't we? You know that it's not days. It's like hours. Oh, no? You, uh, you remember that Leo told you that once you got to the Menhir Stone, everything. you were almost there. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's all right. You were almost there. The, men, the Menhir Stone was the final landmark that made it so you were a hop, skip, and a jump away. I'll grab my cane and I'll help kind of push myself up, grabbing uh, Kristoff's uh, arm, and then steady myself. You know, it's an absolute miracle I can even walk on this thing. You really are a miracle worker. 
okay. arm in arm, leaning on each other, three brothers, friends. You help each other as you continue to press forward, knowing the direction north, northeast that you need to go. And with each step, the trees begin to thin, the mist continues to recede. You feel almost as if you can breathe fully again. The sunlight begins to peak through the canopy. A couple hours pass, and this continues to improve. It gets easier and easier and easier to walk. The brush isn't as thick. The brambles don't pull at your boots like they were before. And it isn't long at all before you break through the tree line of the forest and you see a wide, shining, beautiful, clear field, rolling hills. The sun feels warm on your skin. It feels good to be out of the weirdness, out of the forest. And you feel as if you can see for miles and miles. And it is with that you see the walls, the shining bastion that is the city of Camelot. And that is where we will end our session. Give it up for fucking D give it up. Leader Andy. Leader Andy. Leader, Leader, Andy. Leader Andy. Holy shit, that was so Thank fucking you. good. That was so oh, fucking well good. done, Andy. Holy really, really fuck. Well done. Thank you. I want to say Unbelievable. thanks to all of you. You three made this so easy for me. You have all been so supportive of me uh, in my endeavor to build this miniature arc. Uh, especially Derek, who has taught me Give it up for every Derek. step of the way. Every time Give it I up have for a question, Derek. he's answered my questions. Uh, your characters are unbelievable. I'm going to save it for Avalon and Chill. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, Avalon but, and Chill. So, first things first, if you enjoyed what we did here, two things. One, the first thing you need to do is yes. go to GameFound and check out this amazing campaign that is being uh, use uh, our link that is being funded on GameFound by Studio Agate. Thank you again, Studio Agate, for uh, sponsoring the stream. Thank you so much. Thank and you. secondly, we were gonna we will be back here again to play the next session of Tainted Grail: Song of a Dying World next Thursday, same time, same channel. Go to GameFound, back Tainted Grail: Song of a Dying World. If that didn't convince you to to, to check out the system, then watch I don't know what to do. Then watch, yeah, next watch Thursday. Thursday. Watch Thursday. Watch Thursday. That's <laughs> but with that. Let's chill.